think we are live right now. You are looking right now. That was first ball, first box, first box, second ball. Matt McPhee and Bobby Kite. Yep. So this is Dan Castle again on lane 13 here in Moncton at Fairlanes. We are in the second round of the singles knockouts, singles qualifiers. And uh, on lane 13, we have Matt McPhee. And on lane 14, we have Bobby Kite. And Bobby just closed out with a 10 box. McPhee had a spare, Bobby Kite. Came to us all the way from Calgary, Alberta. You, um, he uh, had a long way across the continent to be here. He has an average of about 130 in 2013 as a golden ball for a while, post an average. High single 185. Bulls in Calgary. Matt McPhee on the left. Ooh. Doesn't say where he comes from. Got seven on that splash, 17 through one. Okay, so that's, sorry about that. I'm just trying to read, read the sheets here. Uh, we have data sheets on everybody. So I don't see where he's originally from, but he has a high single of 186, a high triple of 463 in the world's final. And um, Memberton Lanes is his home lanes. I'm not sure where that is. So we'll start there. And uh, going into the second box now. So this is a second round of qualifiers for the men's singles. Oh my God, I have my head down. Sheesh. And um, Kite drops eight. McPhee drops nine. He has maybe, maybe, maybe not enough. So Bobby, or, um, Bobby Kite has the two and the 10 pin standing with wood there that looks to be very helpful, but that wood around the 10, I think he's at risk of it. Cropping, so he's consulting with one of the other guys on the lanes. In the meantime, Matt McPhee is going ahead and making a nice clean spare. Oh, what a string! No, it was a spare. Yeah, all right. So, what they're doing in the format here the bowlers are bowling five strings and they're moving left to right after they complete a string. Mm -hmm. We'll be covering lane 13 and 14, and uh, they bowl five strings and the cut is the top 32 bowlers between the two shifts. So if the cut were to be held right now, it would require a 565 or better, but that's only covering the first shift. So anybody who bowls over 565 is in good shape, but um, so we expect those scores to get higher as we go along. Okay. So kite drop nine. And it becomes a nine box. All right, and I'll get back to the action now. So after three boxes, Matt yep. McPhee is at 46 plus a ball. And, yep, there we go. And uh, Brian Kite, or yeah, Bobby Kite is at 37. Yeah, always embarrassing when information goes through, but it's, it's coming from all different directions up here, even though it's a good day of bowling. Yeah, we have people handing us stuff. We have data sheets to look at, keep track of the action at the same time. It gets a little challenging. That's why we do two of us up here. That's a big crossover hit for yep. Kite. Kite did great, dropped nine drive this Oh, seven. look at this. He was all over the pocket on that, wasn't he? I'll Pro say. Uh, McPhee. Uh, Get that wood out of there. It's a little in the way. Uh, everything but the kingpin went, the kingpin being the five. And yeah, that's going to be fine. No wood, wood moved away. Kite shooting the seven. And the wood. Uh, not the guide we thought it was. It's a little too far out. And mm. McPhee misses a spare, so both bowlers will have, have, in the U.S., we call it an open box. What do they call it here? Eh. Something else. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's helpful. That's out of the channel for Kite, so a ball in the channel stays in the channel for nine. And uh, McPhee will take ten. 65 and 46 after four. McPhee and Kite. There's three bowlers on each lane. They are actually competing against each other. They're not necessarily teammates, so it's possible for some people who are in the team's events starting tomorrow to be on the same lane, but they are in competition against each other. Bobby Knight puts it on a head pin nicely, drops six, and in the meantime, Matt McPhee gets the lemon drop to the left, just the four pin. So Bobby's going to try to pick up here the two, four, seven, and Six? Is that a six or ten? 
Two, four, six, six, seven. Yep, that's right. Six, Only yeah. got the four, seven. All right, McPhee, great bid on that. Yes. He picks it up. That's that's a tough one. Great way to make up for the single pin that he popped out. And uh, Bobby Knight is going to have to be satisfied with an eight box. 54 oh. half. 54 at the half, and huh. McPhee has a solid 75 plus a ball. That's awesome. Big time. He's in good stand now. Uh, now, this is a Brian Bernacci is how you pronounce that. Brian Bernacci uh, against Nate, uh, check the pronunciation, Lees. Yep, Nate, Nate Lees. I'm familiar with Nate. He bowls <laughs> um, in, in uh, a lot of um, tournaments in the uh, Exeter Pro League. And um, he also is involved with the ACST and is the treasurer for my division. So I've run into Nate quite a bit. Yeah. So Didn't uh, organize this tournament, but organized a lot of others. And he's done Mixed Worlds organization yep. uh, also. So Nate starts out with an eight drop, as does Bernacci's. Okay, Don't pronounce the Z or the Z, okay. if you will. Okay. Bernacci. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Spare for Bernacci. Okay, thank you. I'm shuffling through the sheets now yeah, so yeah, yeah. we can find out a little more about the bowlers. Never an insult. I, we got a, a lot of information to juggle. Oh. Okay, so Nate <laughs> averages 117. Bowls out of Londonderry, New Hampshire. He's from Revere, Massachusetts. Bowls out of Exeter and Academy Lanes in uh, Haverhill, Mass. As well, one uh, one uh, 17 current average, 119 is his high average. High single 189, high <laughs> triple 464, high five 698. And uh, back to the action. Did you catch the scoring there? Yeah, just realizing you might be in quiet. That, that's on me. I gotta set the levels. You just talk how you would. All right, Lee's drops a nine. We're in box three. Actually, I'm sorry. That was box two. So that gives him a nine for his first box. Uh, Bernacci put two in his fill. Yeah. Half Worcester right. Trying to pick that up, and he does. Nicely done. Um, spare in a second for for uh, Brian Bernacci. Yeah. Lee's, well, Lee's Lee. made that single in the third one, I'm afraid. Lee's uh, picked up a 10. So <laughs> Brian Bernacci is from... Campbellton, New Brunswick. So relatively local. And uh, his high single is a 214. Unbelievable. 503 triple and a 728 high five. He's been bowling for 62 years. So this is solid experience here. And he just put seven in his fill. Yeah. Bernacci going ahead while Le Lees is waiting for a re rack. 137. Okay, I'm back to the. Watching what's going on in the lanes. Well, we always think it's good for everybody to get to know a little bit about the bowlers. Oh, Nate, Nate Lee's his first ball in box three. He's on the three pin and takes out six, possibly seven. No, just six. And Bonacci going for a third mark in a row, but does not get it. So this ten or the seven and this one pin stay up. Lee's for the spare attempt and uh, everything but the five pin. And Benacci closes with a 10 box, so 39 after three. Lee's about to throw his third ball. And a 10. So 29 for Nate Lee's. So 39 for Benacci, 29 for Lee's, coming into the box four. I see that Moncton Wildcats at on uh, lane 14, one of the local hockey teams here. I actually watched him play. I watched him play in uh, Fredericton. They creamed him as well. Nate Lees, first ball on the head pin. A little full. See if he can break out that split. And then Benacci, he's off on the two pin. Gets three to go, not just a punch out. But uh, some splits here. So Lees has the three, six, four. And uh, nothing doing, right, right through the middle. Benacci, he's also through the hole. Yeah, that leave's been, I mean, not quite the half Worcester punch, but it's, uh, we've seen those leaves go a few times. The pin action can really get wired at times if you put a good working ball in there. Okay, and Benacci close, or Lee's closes with a nine, Benacci with a six? Yep, I see six. Okay, I'm just watching to see if there's something hiding back there. Nope, there is not. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. Watch the sweep. <laughs> so, please like and follow us on Candleton Bowling Network on YouTube. It makes a difference, people. And we have a lot of good bowling uh, videos up here. Uh, many, many, many videos of many types of matches. All right, Lee's drops nine in his first ball, and Bonacci is off again on a two pin. But this uh, time he's got a pretty good leave here, the head oh, pin in a three. Oh, I got the month in eight. <laughs> <laughs> no. that, re that refers to in uh, Millis, Mass uh, spare for Nate Lee's in a fifth. In Millis, uh, Ryan's Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts, where Greg and I both fall, and a spare mm -hmm. for Brian Bernacci. Um, we get pretty good action down there, although it's not as easy as people tell you it is because sometimes head pin hits can take a lot away. But um, we're, we started calling uh, the 1 3 particularly as the Millis 8 because that can result from being way off on the 4 pin or wherever, and the pins just slowly fall down and leave you 2. And it seems to be pretty common. So that's a Moncton 8 today. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't resist that. All right, now our next bowler's coming up to start their first five. And uh, on the right, we have a gentleman named Chris Ryder. Okay, thank you. And Chris just dropped eight on his first ball. And on our left is... Ryan Drago from Stateside. Ryan, Ryan Drago from Warren, Massachusetts. Chris Ryder is pulls out of Kingswood Lanes. I'm not sure where that is. Oh, gosh. Oh, I should know this. It's one of the big ones. Yeah, I should know, too. They've, they've, they've been a world host before, too. Yeah, I just haven't been inv involved in it before, so my apologies. I'll figure it out. Um, anyway, both bowlers uh, miss their spare attempts, and Chris Ryder got, made a 10 box. One, two pin left for Matt Ryan Drago. And both close out with a 10 box, so 10 to 10. Five strings total pinfall to qualify for one of the top 32 spots in the knockout round. And knowing where the cut is at now, they, you know, anything less than a 568 for five certainly won't get you in. That's, that's where the 30, 565 is where the 32 spot is right now after the first shift, so. Yeah. I'm sure that won't stand. Uh, Ryder drops eight on his first ball. He's got a four and an eight pin. And Drago punched through, but he picked up the five pin two, so not a true half poster, and there's a spare. Nicely done right all over it, no doubt at all. Drago looking to pick up this one. Oh, he goes on the inside of the head pin, and it doesn't take any, all of them. And you have two and two. Kingswood's Fredericton. Oh, my goodness. I should have known that. I've been to the drone. That's one of the other ones there. Now the question is, uh, what's he doing? He went to the right, he just picked up one, so a seven box, 17 after uh, two. Fredericton, about a two hour car ride from our chairs. Okay, so. All right, are on a spare, what a great drop this is. 6-10. And he puts, mm-hmm. Ryder puts eight on the fill, and there's a strike. Took a little while to come down and for Eden to catch it. But we have a strike in the third for Ryan Drago. Uh, you, were, you were on that. Uh, Drago Rotten, sure was, too. Ryan going for a second spare in a row. Oh, and the wood didn't work, but maybe it'll work this oh, way. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, that six pin got a tap. That could have. It did. Uh, well, hate it when that happens. So here's a 10 attempt, and it's <laughs> it's a nine. I went blank for a second here on my screen. Sometimes you just got to let Bullmore do the job. <laughs> well, as I used to always say, the sweeper always wins in the end. Yeah. So if you don't knock down the pins, the sweeper will at the end of the frame. Yeah. Just as soon as we retrieve that deadwood off 14, that's a very standard delay. Who's going down? Is that? Okay. Let's see for sure who that is. I wish I knew. It's like high-speed networking out here. Okay, I thought it was Mike Nargon for a second, but it's not. All right. They advertise, like, these speed friending events near me in Boston. Okay, box four. 
Ryan Drago on your left is on a strike. And uh, Chris Ryder trying to get one. He drops nine, he leaves the four. Ryder's first fill ball. Oh, is look at these eight. pins for Drago. Look at these pins for Drago. He's got And there's a double strike <laughs> for Matt Drago's. Ryan Drago, yeah. Ryan Drago, I'm sorry. You got it. Ryder's got a spare. Ryan Drago and Ryan er, and uh, Chris Ryder just got a spare. So we have Ryder and Ryan, and it's kind of tongue tying me a yeah. little bit. So marks for both. Drago on a double strike now. So that's definitely a recovery from the seven box he had. Ryder looking for a good fill and a spare. And he's just out of the pocket on Working a two-pin, ball. but not too bad. He gets seven in the fill, one, six, ten remain. Drago going for a triple, and, well, maybe we should wait a minute because they're up and slow, but no triple. So seven in the first ball on box four, five for Drago. Spare attempt for Ryan, and uh, the head pin remains. Drago looking for a spare on strike on strike, and he gets it, so spare in the fifth, so seven in the first ball, spare in the second. So get that wood down there, and he sits on a spare, so let me figure where he's at. So uh, no, uh, no, I got you, I got yeah, you. 74 in a ball. 74 in a ball. Chris Ryder's a 64. That's pretty good bowling. Back okay. to the top of the order. Now we are back on Mr. Kite and Mr. McPhee. <laughs> That's Bobby Kite on your right. All the way from Calgary, Alberta. And on your left, we have Matt McPhee. On a spare fill. And uh, he picks up six mm -hmm. on a spare that he left in the fifth. Oh, look at this. Puts him at 81 for the half, and he's got a nice lead there, what we call the Lambda, one, two, four, and five. And Bobby McPhee, or Bobby, Bobby Kite, just uh, clicks a head pin, and there's yeah. another mark. Yeah, Matt's torching it right now, and he missed the single in the fourth as well. He could be even higher, if you believe that. Now McPhee's in this in box six at 91. Yeah. And it was a miss by a whisker, too. Nice 10. And a 10 for Bobby Kite. I'm fairly sure those are parallel pins, unless my memory d deceives me. Gone in a flash. All right, we're coming into box seven of the string. Kite on your right, 64 <laughs> after six. McPhee on your left, 91 in a ball after six. So he still has a fill to go. Kite with the ball. In the pocket. His ball is drifting a little left to right. McPhee oh my drops a gracious. bomb. My goodness, there's no doubt about that strike. Not so close. strike on spare, that puts him at 101 at six. And 111 and a two ball fill still remaining. He's got a great game going here. Bobby Kite just off his object, picks up the seven pin. What's up, Memberton Lanes? Your boy's doing good. And a 10 box for Bobby Kite. Matt McPhee making a great bid at the beginning of the second round to get in there. That's a good way to start. Bobby Kite now, box eight on the right and McPhee on the left. Kite with his first ball in the pocket on the left and uh, it's a disappointing split for that. McPhee. Okay, no double, he's off on the three pin. He takes out five in his first ball. Four horsemen left and a 10 pin. Kite's got three and two, and that's the two, four, seven, six, ten. and there's some wood there. I think that could be a guide. I well, the know. red line's gonna take the six, 10, but then where in the world's the ball gonna go from it's here? It's almost like you have to hit both. Right about there, and oh, look at that. Yeah, well placed, well placed. Yeah, beautiful shot, and uh, a spare for Kite, and uh, McPhee puts, seven on that strike for 118 after seven. And a 10 box for 128 after eight. This is a big game. McPhee is now, or Kite is at 84 and a ball. So this ball, ball will be added to his fill. And he 
He's in there, solid on the head pin, a little too Ooh. solid. Seven and a fill. Speaking of too solid. McPhee, yeah, he came in straight on a head pin too and picks up five. So McPhee put seven on the, or Kite put seven on the fill and he has a six, eight, ten. Some wood there that might dance around, but it's going to have to dance around to pick up that eight pin. Good solid ball there, I think. I think, I'm, I could be well wrong here. I think if you put it to the left of the six and kick it off the wall, you got a shot at this. That's where he's going, a little too far left. They can't hear me, so I'm not giving any suggestions to the bowlers. No, no, we're too far away. We're back here in the luxury suite. Just for the record. Um, so if they make a shot that I suggest and it's wrong, I did, it's not my fault. Um, so, uh, Kite ends up with a nine box, McPhee with an eight box. McPhee is at 136 at nine, and Bobby Kite at 100 after nine. All right, Kite in the final box of the string, and he's just off to the left on the three pin. Drops six, and it's a one, seven, eight, nine, ten split. McPhee looking to break 150 if he can get a spare. Oh, baby. And look at that. Oh, my goodness. I thought he had another strike. That's fine. Help yourself with that plank in front if it doesn't turn too much. Okay. Kite will Ooh, not yeah. have a spare in this box. Yeah, I think the plank's fine. It didn't turn too much. I think that'll work. It's not totally in front of the wood, and there is I'm a little worried behind. about the back wood, but I think you can get the momentum going that direction. Let's find out. And, oh, geez. Now here comes the ball back. Yeah, so the wood spun on him because of the hit on the back wood. Yeah. That's a oh, look one. at that. <laughs> Great shot. Ted. Back door uh, 10 by uh, Bobby Kite. And uh, McPhee has a 10 box, and he closes out with a 146 game. Yeah, basically, apart from that eight box, that was solid throughout. What a great string. He left a total of two pins on the deck during that game for that 146. Six marks, including a strike. Kite put up a 110. And now we get to see Bernacci and Nate Lees again. I'm trying to think if I should just rattle off these top 32 names as they stand right now. The alternative, and I don't know if there's anyone... Oh, boy. I don't know if Bob yeah. Lee's out there, but someone, one of us should put the link on Candlepin Bowling Network. Okay, uh, both, both bowlers are on spares here, so. So you could see it. Nate Lee's just put eight in his fill. And uh, Bernacci put seven on his. So that closes out the first half of this string for 62 for Bernacci and 56 for Lee. Lee's has the 610 with the wood in front of it that looks favorable. Never know about wood, though. And like I said, that just proves the point, doesn't it? And Bernacci also, the back pin in the line did not go. So Nate's trying to get around that wooden channel. Does not. He's a nine box. Bernacci is all over the wood there, and that's a ten box for him. I'm trying to see. I think we can hear the bowling ambience well enough. What's tricky is, uh, yeah, it's not the noisiest thing. It's a very studious atmosphere for the singles, I'll say. It's not teams like, you know, rallying each other like we're absolutely 100% going to see. Much more subdued. It's also a Monday morning, let's be honest. We love uh, Monday afternoon. Jeez. A lot of people drove here from long distances in the last day or two, too. Also true, yeah. Including us. Um, but uh, Lee is on the head pin and dropped seven. The two, four, six is left, and it looks like Bernacci was on the head pin as well. Don't pity us, though. We love the grind. And he only took out five. The three, seven, eight, six, ten. And wood there, we've got to have a check on that wood. I don't want to spook you, Dan, but we got a total of 180 watching live right now. That, that's easily big time numbers for us. Oh. For the live view, recording sometimes are even. Uh, oh yeah, well no, it'll be on demand afterwards. So yeah. even if you've missed a few of these strings, I mean, first of all on YouTube, you can back it up anyway, if it was a favorite bowl you really wanted to see. But on the other hand, um, it's going to be on YouTube uh, until kingdom come. Or at least so, we'd like it to. So, and that's on the Candlepin Bowling Network channel. Mm -hmm. No fee to subscribe. 
It better never be. Oh, and Lees, look at that. He goes to the right. Oh, what in the world? Was that the ball that took that pin? Like yeah, the ball came back and moved it off spot. So now the two pin is kind of a one pin slightly behind, I think. Yeah, he may not shoot at that. He's wondering where the ball's gone off to. It's like the sky's back there. Oh, he will. Oh, yeah, it's on the plate still. Little black ninja back there, so to speak. And a 10 box for Lees and nine box for Bernacci. Mm -hmm. I, I've never, I mean, yeah, pin slide off, off spot. That happens often enough, but that one like really like jerked across almost like a poltergeist took hold of it. It just like, <laughs> here I'm it is. I'm still having bad memories from Saturday. I had a match that I pulled in and I threw a ball that was excellent and it dropped nine. The nine pin was all that was left and the nine pin got moved off spot to the back, not quite enough to take it over. But the, elect the electronic uh, scoring read it as a strike and swept it. Yeah. So that means the rules are when that you have an equipment defect like that, you have to bowl the box over again, and I didn't get as good of a result. So went from an easy spare to an open box. Yeah, no, it's probably your fault unless the button malfunctions. It's your fault if you hit it. No, they're, they're, we were on automatic, not on that natural. All right, so... Eight box for Bonaccia, spare for Lees. 85 for Lees, plus a ball, 89 for Bonaccia. Both looking to mark out to start off their five strings with uh, an advantage. Lees, is, he's on the pocket, on the head pin on that one. It wasn't quite in the pocket, a little full, but he gets eight in his fill. Bonaccia's off on the two pin. Got some good action back there. He took out some extra pins besides the, the punch out. Lees is looking at the two and the six pin with some wood. Might make that work. And gets the two, does not get the six. So open in the ninth. Benacci trying to take that on the inside of that opening. Mm. And that was a pretty good bid, I think. But the three that you see remaining standing didn't go. That yeah, found the opening. And look at that. Ten yeah. box for Bernacci. And I could have sworn that wood covered for, for Lees. That was angled. It's I guess it's, it was it's brutal. It it's was brutal. a little bit farther out than it, than it appeared from here. Ain't that the way. So at the ninth box, Brian Bernacci is at 99 and Nate Lees at 102. Oh, and that's hit. a good way to do a 10th box. And we're going to have matching strikes, and we do. Mm -hmm. Both bowlers say, I'm not going out without a fight here. So put on a strike in both for the 10th. That's some clutch bowling from both guys. I'll see what they do with their two ball fills. A double would be a nice thing to get. So Nate Lee's taking a moment. Don't rush. And he's off on the six pin, so Bonacci's on the head pin, a tad full, so his first ball is six. Lee starts with three in his first fill. Thank goodness they didn't double. I forgot to put a second one on the 10th box. And Nate goes over to the four pin, so his fill is just five. Uh, it's four even, I'm sorry to say. Four? Okay. Yeah. Bernacci Look, got eight. Looked like a diamond. Bernacci definitely had eight. All right, so to close out the string, Bernacci with 117. Nate Lees with a 116. Just the first of five, plenty of time to recover. And that's that's not terrible. I mean, it's not a disaster to bowl in the teens to start with us. So, but you're going to be needing to be in the 20s and 30s, I think. Yeah. Pretty, pretty consistent. They're not going to be comfortable until they are, but they've got time. At least it wasn't a 90, you know? All right, so coming up on the right, and the sheet is missing here. It's Ryan Drago getting the six fill on that one. He's got an 80 half after that double strike recall. Okay, Chris Ryder on your right. Mike should carry through for Drago. One, three, six, ten. This isn't the most straightforward piece of wood, but 
Oh, uh, geez, that's what you're afraid of happening, is that? Yeah, it's not covering the one three pocket. Oh, oh there it goes. Oh, <laughs> Was that within the time limit? I don't know, but then Lee, uh, Ryder has a 10 box. Uh, but it's that old chestnut, and I know you know, of course, but no such thing as a time limit in this game. So a spare in the sixth box for Ryan Drago, a 10 for Nate, uh, for, uh, I've got Nate Lee's sheet in front of me for Chris Ryder. There we go. We're good now. So Ryder on his first ball in box seven. Right on the head pin, right in the pocket, and nine go. Four pin remains. On the fill, Drago's off on the three pin, takes out six. So, Wait, did you need that? No, I'm keeping track of it, though. Okay. Six for Drago, you said, Dan? Thanks so much. 96 through six. Yep. How about that? Ryan Drago is actually producing and writing his first movie called A Stranger in Town. <laughs> Watch for it. Ryder. That's fair. Spare. Drago. Oh, man. Deserved a spare. But it didn't go. No, no, that's luck. Unless this one takes this one late. That's got some speed on it. Give it a look. Give it a look. That's tapping. Yeah, well, it's sorry, not dropping. We had some late leaves here. Late drops. And he makes a 10. So at box seven, Drago's at 106. Ryder's at 84 in a box. In a ball. All right, box eight. In the fill, Ryder puts seven. Drago with a great nine drop, seven pin only. He had a 10 in that last box. He had a 10 in that last, okay. I believe so, and a spare for Ryder. And that brings. 19 and another. And here we go, and no. Does not go. So 106 and 93, Drago and Ryder respectively in box seven. Well, it looks like a 91 in that seventh, so actually I'm going to dial it back here. That's Sorry. the official score. All right, 91. We're not the official scorekeepers anyway, yeah. so. That's right. I, I never do this disclaimer enough. All scores you see are unofficial until announced otherwise. We've been known to make errors before. We try not to. Except me. No, that's an error. All right, Drago trying to pick up the 10 box, and he's got it. So a 10 box makes brings him to 116. Chris Ryder looking to have a big fill and maybe a couple more marks to go. Dan, you should go talk to Paul a second. Do you mind if I take over? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Let me take your mic away. And, uh, yeah, mine's still working here. Ryder's got seven on that spare. That's uh, 108. I'm, I got I got him coming up for you. Second ball for Drago just missed taking out the six pin. Ryder's got a nine, 117 through nine. That plank, another plank foils Drago right there. He's gonna get a nine out of that for 125. Had that a few times for the spare. This time it was for the 10. Takes out four, five. No, the two pin's gonna stick around. Drago digs in three, five, six, and the plank's gonna spin around nicely. And from the looks of it here, it looks like the red line should take it all. And Ryder spares. Good bounce back. And a great string working, 127 plus. Drago can. Lefty should like this plank where it's placed, facing his direction of travel, and that's another spare. 135 in a ball. So it's the first of five strings. Uh, all the other scoreboards are being wiped clean. Looks like we're the last ones. And uh, once we are, whoops, how many squirreling about here? 
Once we're set here, we'll rotate and start string number two. That's a nine fill for Ryder that's capped that off, 136. And Ryan Drago, light on the head pin, but five, 140. Both of them good scores and good clips to make the top 32 knockout bracket later on. That was the end of string one. Keep, we're staying live here. Give us just a few minutes, of course. If, uh, Bullers will rotate now, and string two will begin in just a moment. Take the window capture away. So where are you all watching from out there? It's great to see you all live today. Action will be 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Remember, that's Atlantic time, uh, one hour ahead of the anywhere in the continental U.S., so ahead of New England, it's plus one hour, East Coast, and uh, further back from there. Uh, GMT minus four, if you've, based on the fact uh, North America's changed the clocks back. Remember, full standings are on uh, leaksecretary.com. And uh, I'll be right back while I seek out this lineup here. Looks like Gwen will do gay. I'm not quite sure. See, Brian Purdy and Scott Douglas have taken position behind lane 13. Starts off on lane 14. He's got six pins standing. Matt McPhee uh, taking out the head pin and the three pin. That's how he starts his second string with a good splash out. Looks at seven there. Seven down, three to go, and McPhee starts with a nine. Tight quarters indeed, but we just saw two strikes. That is indeed Gwendol Duguay. I'm starting to get the knack for this. Have it help. Uh, that's not going to do you any good. Oh, yikes. You'd like to see the bowling, wouldn't you? There we go. Take a look at that. That's the first balls for each of them. McPhee. Are they? Got that plank annoyingly in front of the uh, four pin. And it just all spins out, doesn't even add anything to the strike fill, but he's got eight out of that. Duguay spares on strike. McPhee gets eight. It's just sticking with the first ball, basically. My name is Greg Guyar. I'm alongside Dan Castle. Paul Grant is uh, back here in the booth, and although at this moment he's running various uh, third-party errands pretty much for us. Sorry, took my, took, took my headset off for a second. No, that, uh, no that's okay. You, we got it. Man's got to eat. I can take the solo if you want. Yeah, why don't you do that for a minute? I'll be here. Yeah, it would be my pleasure. Here. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Big Fee gets a spread eagle on that one. That's why our logo is a, 
We used to call ourselves Spread Eagle Productions before we got uh, complaints in the mail. I wonder why. <laughs> you know, we're proud of our former identity. It did make sense, you know. We Hard work doesn't always pay off, like, straight away, but it will in the end. Gwendol takes aim. At the lands on the six pin. Takes out three. To, so that'll go on the spare, but he's still ten ahead. To start off in the early goal, ooh, that wasn't a bad bit of that eagle at all. Duga has got two, three, four, seven. And a nine and a seven. So this is Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. The easiest way to be notified is just to make sure you're liked and followed on Facebook and or subscribed on YouTube, just on whichever platform you're on right now, although YouTube tends to have the higher quality that um, just out of the two platforms. So if you're able to get on there, awesome. And that way, if you're, if you're on YouTube and you hit the subscribe button, there's a little bell icon that pops up as well. That's the notification bell. Somehow on YouTube, when you're, you subscribe, it doesn't always tell you uh, when we put out new videos. So sometimes you mismatch it, especially when we're starting to stop in the stream many times, especially during Teams Tuesday to Friday. That could really come in handy. So the bell icon is the notification thing, and you will get notified if you click that one uh, and select all notifications. And then you'll always be in the know whenever Candlepin Bowling Network goes live. On YouTube. Oh, look at this sweep. McPhee came close. Duguay just off. He keeps the one, too. A couple pieces of wood will make this 10 try difficult. Matt will leave it be. It's nine apiece for him and Gwennell. Duguay's got 56 of the half. McPhee, 53. 13, let's see. Uh, is Brian Purdy coming up now? I actually don't have the stat sheet in front of me, I confess, but Purdy's out of New Hampshire, if I recall correctly. On a season one candlepins for the cancer ladder. That's a nine drop. That's the one I did, incidentally. I wasn't terribly proud of that broadcast, to be honest with you, but it showcased a lot of good bowling. It was Merrill, Riva, and Drake in that one. Oh, heaven help me, who's the fifth? Two spares apiece, nice one. Bernacci, I see you in chat there. Pride of New Brunswick. Oh, where's his, oh, where's his she? We got it. High single 214, high triple 503, high 5, 728, Brian. It's, he's dropping eight here. Birdie. Two, never mind. 710. He's got an eight drop as well. Bernacci has the better leave, and he spares. Second one straight. Birdie, yes, he got the corners to go. 18 and another for the pair of them. Not directly head to head, of course. We got a field, crowded field here. 20 lanes out of the 32. Here, Fair Lanes, Moncton, New Brunswick. We're live, we're here. We've survived the ride. I was given metric lessons the whole way, but we got there. Five, six. Uh, that's luckless for Bernacci. He put a good hit on that one. He'll be happy with the 8-fill at least. 36 that should read. Brian Purdy drops 7 and has 35. Oh, did they just? You got a strike on that after all? Oh, thank you for that. Well, you can't do as I say, not as I do. You can't turn your back on it too soon. So nine makes 44 for Purdy, and then we got to put that strike on the board for Bernacci. And he's on the head pin again. 
I'll watch carefully this time. Yeah, that two-pin got rocked. This time I think it's going to stay put, he said confidently. That's on a strike fill. Purdy luckless on the head pin. He's got a spread eagle. I'll read that. I'll read that later. But that, uh, scores just came in. I'll have that for you in just a moment. Renacci gets eight in the strike and nine in the box. So 65 through four. That all told. Birdie is seven. Ryan washes out seven, the one, three, six. Birdie, look at these pins mix. Nine pin stays put. Singles today, we'll have the round of 32, the knockout bracket, and just uh, after this, it's uh, the second to five strings in the second shift. Panachi spares. And so does Purdy, two have Two great halves by the pair of them. 61 in the ball, Brian Purdy. Brian Bernacci, 75 plus. Scott Douglas. And Ryan Drago having rotated from 13 to 14. So singles are today. That the posted start time was 3 p.m. Atlantic, 2 p.m. Eastern. We will probably be a little hour behind on this one, you know, just the way it goes sometimes. Both of them punching out on the head pin, I'm afraid. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. They give us a very short lunch break on the Candlepin Bowling Network, so the job's not as easy as you might think. Oh. All right, Scotty Douglas on the left. Third ball coming up. And uh, Mr. Drago on the right. Yeah, that was, that was a tough box for them. They were just fighting uh, punch outs there, but box two now. Chance to start it up. Okay, so Scotty Douglas. Uh, from Massachusetts, um, bowls in many tournaments that I've, I'm at, ECST, other things like that. Uh, so I see Scotty a lot. Big hit strike. And a strike for Matt Drago, Ryan Drago. You got it. S sorry, I'm getting there. I'm just getting warmed up again. <laughs> uh, Scott Douglas put it on the head pin, and he's rewarded with a 6, 7, 9, 10. And a piece of wood there that could help. Well, it helps pick up the three, does not pick up the seven. Sidewalls can move in Moncton. Have to really jam it off the wall, though. And that ball was off the wood in the channel, so that'll be a nine box for Douglas. I'm watching to see how that scores, actually. They scored as a nine? I think so. There should have been, at least from my point of view. So one thing that's different here is the channels down by the pit, by the, by the deck are much flatter than we we are in the states. A lot more stuff coming out of there. Drago puts up an eight. Phil, Scotty Douglas, he's on a head pin, but he gets a truncated spread eagle. Yep. Three on the right, and the four and the seven pin on the left. So when the ball leaves the surface of play, they get to determine it. Now, Drago's got a tough shot here. I'm not sure which side he goes on. He's, he's going to try to play that front wood. And um, it did move over in the direction of the 10, but it didn't go. Scotty trying to spare this. Uh, he's off on the six pin, just gets two more. So still a nine fill hmm. in the strike for Ryan Drago. Gives him a 28 after two, 37 after three. And Scott Douglas has a nine box, so he's at 26. 
Oh, I know what I'm doing. I keep deleting these numbers. There we go. Now we can see the frame numbers just fine. All right, we're coming up into box four. Brian Drago on the right. Lane 14. Solid on the head pin, a little too full. Get some action. He's still got a split. Scotty is in the pocket. Oh, and yes. there's a strike for Scott Douglas. So Ryan Drago is looking at the seven. Is that the seven or the four? That's seven, nine, ten, and a piece of yeah. plank in front. Seven, nine. The wood might help, and boy, does it. He picks ten. up a really mm -hmm. tough split. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope, ten. Oh, ten's stay. still there. I'm sorry. I take that back. Rewind, erase my words. It's not a spare. Yeah. But that's a ten, a nine box. So 46 after four. Yeah, I didn't see that ten pin still there. I thought it was just the seven and the nine. Hopefully it's not my thing here. Let me make sure I'm not setting you up for failure here. No, it's okay. You're, you're pretty clear here. It's just sometimes I yeah. didn't catch it. Hopefully All it's right. clear out there as well. I know I was having a field day with, like, tech issues, but this time... All right, so Ryan Drago puts it on a head pin is rewarded with what we call the banana split, or some of us call that, which is the four, seven, six, ten. And Scotty Douglas puts <laughs> on his first ball, seven. He has the one, two, seven. Uh, spread, uh, four horsemen minus a pin. So see what Ryan does with this. He's going to the right side. Oh, it's fun. Oh, that was fun because he carried it. Pin over there, it didn't quite connect, but that was a good bid. Yeah, the wood doesn't always stay flat here. Ooh. And Douglas, uh, nine fill on a strike, does not carry the seven pin. And there's a 10 box for Mr. Drago, and he's at 56 after five. And Scotty does not get that nine or ten, seven pin to go, so he's nine for 54 at the five. Uh, box mark, halfway point in this right. string. Uh, I guess it brings up Gwendol Dugay and uh, Matt McPhee again. I believe that's where I mentioned the notation you see is the Canadian way. Triangles are spares, squares, squares are strikes. I thought about putting that little like descender line they have to separate <laughs> the two numbers, but there was no need for that. No. All right, McPhee drops seven in his first ball. He's got the two, four, seven, and ten pin. And Dugay is left with a 1 2 8. And oh Ooh. no, there was a sleeper 8 pin back there. He picked up the what I called as a spare, as a leave, but there was another pin. Dugay picks up a mark. And it is pronounced Dugay, correct? It sure is. Okay. And I don't have his sheet here, so I don't know if you introduced him or not yet. Yeah, we, we, we stretched Paul too thin, I think. You know, we are a bit shorthanded. Uh, Bobbly unavoidably was unable to make it out here it was our hope to have a fixed stream and one that was mobile um and that's just not doable on a, but we have a pretty good setup yeah. here so nothing to yeah. complain about yeah many many thanks uh fair lanes for giving us the dj booth here you know usually a uh, the powerhouse of their glow bowling nights it makes a huge difference because we're not having to set up a table down by the bowlers you know run wires and all that kind of stuff we've got a good perch here to see the pins from and not get in the way of the bowlers. And uh, I think it's great. So in the spare, Dugay put eight. He just picked up one pin of that two pin leave. And that's a good out for McPhee. Nine box for both. 83 after seven for Dugay and uh, 72 after seven for McPhee. All right, coming into box eight, McPhee on his first ball. The lefty throws it on the head pin, a little more solid than he liked. Took out seven. Dugay just cherry, or lemon dropped. I wanted to say cherry picked, but lemon drop is a word. And uh, just gets the four pin, so. Sour happening anyway. Something big happening. Somebody threw a big string or something. Yeah, yeah I heard a round of applause. That was interesting. Yeah, that, that was big. I don't know who did it or what it was. Yeah, we're too far away. It was over by the lower number lanes. We're going to have to look into that. Higher number lanes. Or was it? It was up there. All right, so both bowlers miss their spare attempts. McPhee ends up with an eight box. 
Duguay ends up with a nine box. So at the eighth box, Duguay has 92 and McPhee is at 80. Yeah, the bowlers are not going to feel comfortable unless they have like a 120s average. I think a high 110s stand a chance of nipping maybe, it to maybe the Maybe one game or two. I mean, I think I, I predict the cut will be 600 or better. Yeah. I don't think 565 is going to stand. Yeah, I'm sure they'll feel better being on the right side of that for sure. Yeah, so an eight drop for McPhee on the ninth box. And uh, Duque a little closer to the head pin this time. His first ball takes out six and one, four, seven, and eight. Our nine are left. And uh, McPhee going for the one, three. And uh, off in the ocean on the left. Does not get that. So, so we found out what the applause was for because uh, our colleague Paul Grant found a microphone. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we usually try to keep that away from him. Um, I'll tell you a story about Paul in a well, minute. You got you to say what it is. Um, so 101 to 90 right now, Duguay and McPhee. So it say was it. a 206 game was just thrown. And I didn't catch who did it. Calvin Locke. Calvin Locke. Calvin Locke, 206. Oh, my God. What lane was it? I mean, I, ha I got to keep it on this TV lane, but I'll be heartbroken if it was off camera. Yeah, I think it was. Which, uh, which lane was it? Calvin Locke just threw a 206. We, yeah, got we, it. we reported it. We got it. Don't worry, Paul. We heard you. Okay, so do, uh, McPhee is trying to pick up a 1-2, one, 1-3 uh, one, again. He misses it. And uh, Duguay misses his spare attempt as well. So both bowlers will close out. Uh, McPhee really needs these pins for 100. He only gets one 99 game. And uh, Duguay with a 9 box for a 110. Yeah. So 110 to 99 on this string. Yep. Birdie and Bernacci on up next. Hey, Paul, so how much how much of that 206 did you see? Just the end? I, saw the, I saw he had like a 90-something half, and he got a strike. He had like a 108 with the fill. It's 108 through 5, so I started getting the phone out. I tried to record it. It was like the oh, Play Witch Project. You were recording it? I recorded it. I came up in chat the last five boxes. You recorded the last five boxes. Yeah. So we have that on video. Which lane was it, do you remember? Chat. Uh, it was lane number two, I believe. Lane two. So it yeah, and he had up. a 101 in the first. He had a, a, a 108, 101 first string and a 108 half to start the second. He was sandbagging the first. <laughs> and we <laughs> just saw a strike on spare for Purdy in lane 13. Thank you so much, Paul. And a nine drop on spare for Bonacci in lane 14. I'm really, I'm really heartened to hear we were able to capture some of that, you know. It would have it would have sacrificed the picture quality if I'd zoomed out that much, but I'm so glad we were able to document that big string, you know. Uh, Oops, I'm back so on Windows you, here. I lost my video. You lost your video? Yeah. Uh, oh, I oh no one else did. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So did, did Bernacci get that? Pin yeah, or? yeah. He picked up the spare. Or no, wait, no, that's a. Uh, he picked up the last one. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I know what I'm doing. I uh, called it. Yeah, he picked up strike on spare, actually, it was. And uh, Bernacci had a nine box, nine on his fill. All right, let's. That's it. Hard to keep track of everything all the time, gang. Yeah. Too many pins flying, too much math to do. I thought they got that 206 added up correctly. Congratulations again, Calvin, for that. See you on the podcast. Yeah, so. Do a podcast tonight now. Yeah, I th I th I th we might do. <laughs> That's right. Monday's the usual ripping the rack podcast. Calvin Locked in Matero, Brian Athern. We'll see. We'll see them all here. Uh, hey, first, various teams. First ball and a strike for Purdy is a five. And uh, Bernacci is on the head pin, has the seven pin, but then the six, nine, ten triangle. He's going to try to cut the triangle over. Doesn't go. And a great spare by Purdy for spare on there on strike and uh, that was a tough one got a lot of action going there and Bernacci with an eight box so 91 after after six for Purdy 101 after seven for Bernacci and 101 and a ball for Purdy how's that sound fantastic yeah. I'm keeping it straight as best as I can here Bernacci on the head pin, a bit full. Punches out three and two is leave on a spare. 
Birdie is, has one wing of the spread eagle for a seven fill. 108 in his seventh box. And Bonacci's on the four pin. Birdie looking for another mark and Ooh. oh wow. Oh my goodness gracious. The wood robbed him of a great attempt here and Bernacci ends up with an eight box. Purdy with a nine box. So 117 for Purdy and 109 for Bernacci. Two more boxes to go in this game. Sorry if that was caught. Sorry. All right, Bernacci on the right, lane 14. So by the way, I'm getting Calvin, Calvin 206, 101 in the first, 307 for two. Wow. <laughs> Is that why Paul was mentioning the sandbag? I didn't quite catch that, I confess. I don't know. <laughs> so Bernacci punches out a spread eagle. No time like the present. Purdy got a little, a spread eagle plus the eight pin, but it looked, oh, there it goes. <laughs> That's one you don't see every day. And uh, the man can do no wrong. picks out his. There it goes. Nor he. All right. Good. Good. Uh, great spares there in the in the ninth box for both bowlers. All right, Bernacci on his fill. And that's a 10 fill. That was a bomb, gang. Oh, baby. That's taking advantage of that leave. And Purdy is off to the side a little. He's got maybe some late action here. Five and a fill. One, two, seven, six, ten is the leave. I mean, I'm, I'm get. I mean, Bernacci is a legend, you know. 62 so. years of bowling. It's, it's such a delight to see him doing well on our cameras, too. I mean. No spare in the 10th for Purdy. Uh, he's going to be 140 plus, though. Congratulations to him on a great string. Let's call it 141. Nine box. 141 for Purdy. I don't know his first name offhand. I don't have a sheet on him. Brian Purdy, yeah. It's Brian. Two Brian's. It's a Bernacci. First ball. He's at 139 plus two balls. First ball. Oh. In his own is a double strike, so let's call it 149 and a ball. Uh, let's uh, notate it this way, I suppose. I kind of messed it up, to be honest with you. That works. <laughs> you get the point. Or just put the number in. Ah. Greg worked really hard to put together Canadian notation on the score sheet, so. Yeah, I whipped it up real quick. I couldn't not. Okay, you're supposed to have one more column for it, but we get the point. It's a Brian Bernacci double. Go on. It could it be a triple? Oh, oh, it's so close. So 149 and 8 is a 157 game. Excellent bowling here by these two bowlers. 141 to 157. He gives Curry himself versus Bernacci. Gives himself the pointer finger round of applause. That's now, now they're not really competing head to head. I keep saying versus, but that's not really the case. The mm -hmm. they're they're this is a qualifier. So. They're all bowling five strings, and then there's a cut after 30, at the 32 bowler mark. Yep. 20 lanes in use right now here in fair lanes. Now again, we see Scotty Douglas and Ryan Drago, mm -hmm. 13 to 14. Douglas is at 54. Drago is at 56. They're looking to get some big halves here, too, and at least get into the 120s or 130s if they can. So Drago's first ball was off a little bit to the left and did not get a Good leave without, has a bit of a mess there. He only took off four. Scotty, looks like he, can't see if that five pin's still there. Kind of looks like it might uh, be. That's all gone. That's gone. Okay. And well, they're all gone now, so that's a spare. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what the leave was. Drago looking for a 10 box. He's going for it. A lot of a lot of times um, we're, we're advised to um, just go for the two on the side play a safety, so to speak. Um, but that's a seven box for Ryan Drago. And uh, I'll cover the mic if you want to just cover the scoreboard. Yeah. OK. So we're going to silence Greg for a little bit. He's just had a food delivery. And 
Dan Castle here with you from Candlepin Bowling Network covering the men's singles qualifiers at, at uh, Fairlanes in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. And we're covering lanes 13 and 14, and as the bowlers shift a lane after each string, we'll be covering a lot of them. All right, first ball in the seventh box for Ryan Drago. He drops eight. Scotty's on a fill. Scotty Douglas on the left. Puts it in the pocket and gets seven. So seven in a fill on a spare. 71 after seven, Scott Douglas. And he's got the four, seven, 10 split. Drago's shooting at the six, seven, and he kicks a six, six over, doesn't go. Scotty picks it up. He's clutch. Spare in the seventh for Scott Douglas. And a 10 in the seventh for Ryan Drago. So he's at 73, and Scott Douglas is at 81 plus a ball. And um, again, as I mentioned before, we are they're not bowling head-to-head -head against each other. They are bowling against each other, trying to make that magic top 32 bowlers. And I, I don't even know how many there are. There's probably over 75, 80. Drago is first ball in the eighth. Just misses a head pin on the two pin. It's Douglas on a fill. And he does likewise, misses a head pin. He's off on the two. Drop six, he's left with a four horseman right. So six fill for Scotty Douglas. Puts him at 87 through seven. Drago's shooting at what we call the Cleary, the four horseman plus the eight. And great effort, great effort, but that eight pin stayed up. Douglas trying for another mark. Uh, misses a head pin, picks up everything but. So both bowlers have an open box in the eighth. And a, a 10 box for Drago. And a 10 box for Scott Douglas. So 97 for Douglas after eight, 83 after eight for Drago. All right, box nine. Both of them looking to try to get up into the 120s, 130s on this game. I think they both have a like a possibility of doing it, but both will need marks. Drago, great ball. And the seven pin sticks around. It was touched. Scotty was on the head pin as well on lane 13. He's left with a four, seven, eight, ten. He's got some wood there. If he can make that dance, he might be able to pick up the triangle and the ten pin. Drago's got a lot of wood there. Hopefully it works for him. And it does. Spare in the ninth for Ryan Drago. And Scott with this little bit more difficult shot. Got some late action off the right wall, but does not get the spare. So he still has to shoot at the four and the seven pin. Try to make that go. For the 10, and uh, one of his balls came back in the gutter, or the channel as we call it. And there you go, 10 box for Ryan, uh, Scotty Douglas, uh, 107 at nine. Drago's at 93 plus a ball. And into the 10th box of this game. Drago on a fill. Goes wide onto the three pin, just puts three on it. Douglas in the 10th box, first ball. He's in the zone, and it's a strike. Timely strike for Scott Douglas. The five pin last to fall, a uh, piece of wood came out of the right side and tapped it just enough. Ryan on the fill, on a spare attempt. Gets everything but the high-low jack, the one seven ten. It's wood in front of the 10 pin. It's pretty when it goes. And almost, he, he did the right thing. He played the right side of the head pin. Scotty Douglas is going for his first fill ball. And that first fill ball is seven. He shoved that five pin way off spot. So there's wood there, he could pick this up. Got a shot at it, and no, the 10 doesn't go. So a nine fill in the strike, and that gives him a 126. So Douglas closes with a 126, and Drago closes with a 105 in this game, which is game number game number two of the second round of qualifiers. They are all bowling five strings. So now what's going to happen? Bowlers are going to take a step to the right. 
And we'll get a new set of bowlers in lane 13, and we're going to continue covering Scotty Douglas and company in lane 14. So I'm not sure who's coming up over here. I've got a lot of sheets being handed to me. Again, this is Dan Castle, and I'm here with Greg Gouillard with the Candlepin Bowling Network. A lot of friends here today. Um, a lot of people I bowl with regularly. Um, great to see all of them, and a lot of new friends to make here, too. So this is a great place. They have 36 lanes of bowling here, all Candlepin. And clean facility, lots of food and everything like that available. All right, want to swap out? All right, so I'm swapping out for Paul Grant right now. He's going to cover the next string and give my voice a break. Thank you. I, I, think, Dan just want, I think Dan wants a slice of pizza, Greg. That's why he's leaving. No, it's because you're calling me out. coming up here. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know you want to cover daily. I don't mind covering right, daily, too. First, I'll do the second, I'll do the second. Yeah, go, go ahead and do this one. No, you do the first, I'll do the last two. So go ahead and do one. And, um, daily's going to be on two. Two of the match strength saying You can cover one, I can cover one. Stay tuned, string three will begin in just a moment. I wonder if that was audible enough. Oh yeah, it was. String three will begin in just a moment. Okay, welcome back. Second ship, third string. World singles knockout qualifying rounds on Canlepin Bowling Network. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouya. Great to be with you again. Avon Valley Lane's owner, Wendell Duguay. His brother Sam at the high single last year, 192. They're in the World Tournament. Cabin Lock just threw a 206 after a 101 first, a 206 second. You can catch the last four or five boxes on Canlepin Chat. The wobbly video and all, off the cuff video. Great performance by Calvin Locke, the true king of the north. He'll be bragging about tonight on Ripping the Rack podcast every other Monday night. Subscribe to the channel, Ripping the Rack podcast, on YouTube. Welcome back, Greg Guyar. Thanks, Paul. Uh, tell us about the bowlers uh, on lane 13 as well. Okay, let's see. Let me get any stuff you organized here. As we come here on the fly. No, oh, no problem. No problem. Mike up first, whoever. Yep. Mike Brown, I believe. Mike Brown followed by Josh Daly, and then followed by Rob Linehan. So Mike Brown, without the E, is on lane 13. As you change on the fly here, all afternoon long, all morning long. 
Live coverage of World Team Tournaments tomorrow morning, local time, 9 a.m. Atlantic time, 8 a.m. Eastern time through Saturday. Include the playoffs Friday night and Saturday, the final three rounds on Canada Morning Network on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, back to live action. Greg, oh, gosh. Oh, so oh, 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 gosh. You know what I've done? I've done a horrible thing. I've Wow. I got the score sheet up. That's a terrible error. Um, Sparrow Phil's working for each of them, so that's six and six. And now we can finally have a normal broadcast. I apologize. That's okay. Lineups come at the last second, so we're, we're doing this on the fly, folks. I appreciate your patience. We don't edit it. and We record it. We do a live stream to get it right away. <coughs> so you see all the... Blemishes. I regret I am one fallible man as well. Uh, tell me about it. Been there, done that too many times. It's more challenging, obviously, live stream, but we want to get to you right away. So they each had a spare in the second with a six fill, each 26 through two. Another spare for Mike Brown on lane 13. First left hander, Gwendo Duguay. In the pocket, missed, missed the pocket rather. I couldn't see it. A little obstructive view back here, way back here in the DJ booth. One, two, four, seven in the spare. You've got the backup monitor in a pinch, but that's a tough one. Well, Brown's in the spare, actually. He gets eight, so eight in his spare, so 44 through three. Went on a nine last box, 35 through three. Mm -hmm. I'll get it right. We got it. Mm. Went on inside number one. Mike Brown from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Last month, celebrated his 38th birthday. He's a 113 league bowler, 127, his best season ending average. High single 196, high triple 467, high 5704. Out of Woodside Bowler Rama in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Over 30 years. Then we got him involved in bowling. He's made it to the Worlds three, three straight times in the playoffs 2019, 20, and 21. Good bid, almost. Could get that wood to shoot across. Mike Brown also plays softball. Third base, great defensive player who played softball. Gwendolyn gets the 10, 45 through four. Spare eight, 44 for three for Brown. And now a 10, 54 through four. After these five strings, we have two more strings after this string, obviously, then we'll sign up, get ready for our knockout rounds. 30, 32 teams, I believe, make the playoffs. Yep, that's right, 32. 32 people, of course. Yeah, yeah 32 people, 32 bowlers. Mm -hmm. Knockout round head-to-head. Win or go home. Well, not go home, but we got to bowl tomorrow yeah. teams. Well, we're not going anywhere anytime soon, that's for sure. We're yeah. here all week. Yeah, through Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, possibly. <laughs> possibly. I mean, the hotel's pretty nice. Yep. Thanks to Bob Lee of Kenneth Bowling Network, Airbnb. All right, back to live action. Gwendolyn Duguay, 1, 3, 7, 10. Wood to the right to possibly help. The broom is out. Can you sweep it over? Good try. Oh, what's coming back? No, no, it won't go. Won't go. He gets the 10. 55 half. The seven bucks for Brown. A 61 half. Here comes the destroyer, Josh Daly. Won the recent ICBA championship with the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. A fierce bowler, one of the best bowlers in the game today. And here's Brian Purdy out of the Big 20 in Scarborough. I mean, Mike Walker's house. Great job hosting the turn we put together. The Lewiston family, with well, that tragedy last month, $7,000 raised. Donations still coming in, so thank you to the Lewiston, Maine, and the Maine bowler community and all across New England. Brian. Brian's got only the four pin left standing. He did yeah. very well. He was falling alongside Bill, uh, Brian Bernacci. I beg your pardon. It's a spare. Brian Purdy gets a spare to start. Daly missed right. 2 7 8 10. Josh from Danvers, Massachusetts, originally East Boston, Mass. A couple of weeks returning, just 24 years young. And the question is, Greg, how great. How great can he get? He made a big name for himself, the U.S. Invitational, out of the world's minus Canada in 2021. At Lee Lane's National Hampshire, semifinal 478 
three string match. 183, 111, 184. Just astonishing. Purdy off to the right. Five. Daly right in the middle, spread eagle. Well, those pins are jostling around. That's going to be a 1 4. Daly takes out one wing of the spread eagle. You're having a hard time seeing over Brian, aren't you? No, I can't see because I'm uh, we're standing in the way and we're not high enough up here. That's the problem. Yeah. We, not, we, need, we need an elevator. <laughs> I need a high chair. Yeah. That's true. Not sure where that spare sludge came from. Yeah, spare five in the first, Brian, nine, 24 through two. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else you have after that. Can't see from here. The angle? Yep, that's, that's good, 17 and 24. And we got standings in. Greg will give us the update after the first two strings here on a second shift of two. This is the second shift only. Will do. Purdy drops nine, mm -hmm. 10 pin for a spare. Ooh. It won't go. You would right at that wood on the right of the 10. Left of the 10. Daly, will it go? Yes. And Purdy with the Paul Grant special. Missed the second, make the third. Never a good time for that. 10. That puts Bryant at 34 through 3. We'll fill it left this box. We'll give the updates. Daly's on a spare first on lane 13. Purdy, beautiful ball, a little full, a banana split. Four, seven left, six, ten right. It's a good name for that shot. Daly in the bonus, strike bid, nine. Wobbly, five, goes, strike on the illegal block in the back. Throw the flag. On spare. Strike on spare. Purdy trying to sweep it over, good bid. Almost. Mm. I see what's going on. So Calvin Locke is top of the shop, 307 after the 101 and 206. Brian missed right that time for a nine, 43 through four. Josh Tilly, yeah. 37 through three, 47 plus two through four. No big surprise here. My dream will be to get that monitor readjusted. In the meantime, I'll just rattle off uh, Jay Simino is uh, at a 145 average, 290 after two. Mark Weber, 283. Josh Daly, 276. Here he is. Brian Bernacci, 274. Uh, David Cooper, John Winchell, Danny Martin, Matt Huff, Daily and Mike Bernardo. Daily for Nardone. double. Oh, sorry, Greg. Almost a daily double. <laughs> Mike Brown, Carl St. Ange. I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. I beg your pardon. Brian Purdy is on the list as well. Uh, Brian Purdy currently running a, just lost my page, 127 average. Daily right on a spare. Spare strike, spare. 57 through 4, 67 the ball through 5. Wow. The destroyer, Josh Daly. High single, 192, high triple, 478. High five keeps climbing. Recent one I have is 732. Hmm. There's just any way I can get this to angle up or something. All right, levels are back right now. Scott Douglas drops nine. He has the 10 pin for a spare tough piece, two pieces in front to work with. Half whisker for Rob Linehan. These are the third bowlers starting the third string of five. Second shift of two. Qualifying rounds. Players to fall. Separate broadcast. Douglas stomps his foot. Missed it. Brian Purdy, by the way, has a high single of 202. More on him next time he bowls. Younger brother Tim Douglas, the tornado. Scott, the Paul Grand Special, missed the second, make the third. 10 through 1. Rob averaging 115. High single, 173. High triple, 433. Unofficially, and a high five unofficially, 677. Mansfield, Mass. Balls at Ryan's and Millis, Mass. Balling since he was four years old. 
Another April birthday today. Scott drops eight this time, 7-10. Rob, 2-1 split. He's got another good young bowler. Great potential. But that wood, can he kick it over? He does! Spare! 20 the ball through two. Linehan tries to do the same thing, almost. He had the 4 7 10. Ten box, 18 through two, from the third of five. Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fair Lanes. If you missed it, check on Kennelton Chat the last four or five boxes of wobbly video off the cuff with no tripod or stuff. Calvin Locke from a 2 0 6 and the second string to lead the pack in round two. Captured the rare specimen of the wild. <laughs> Douglas, good bid. Trying to move over the five, holds up. Five and seven. Linehan, left-hander, pulls down seven, one, two, seven. We call him the roadrunner back home. He's got that little five-step delivery, a scamper to the line. Very effective, though. Did you bring the bird seed? <laughs> Rob's a great guy. He's also got two sliders on his shoes. That's a, I couldn't do that. For a spare, oh, right around the seven somehow. That helps them from, uh, from that sticking. They wrap that, that thing around the shoe. Some lanes stick, especially when it's humid outside or when you resurface the lanes. More common on synthetic. Scott gets nine. After a spare eight, 28 through two, nine, 37 through three, Linehan 10. 28 through three after an eight and a pair of tens. Scott has kind of got that hop step, that second step he sort of pushes off it like dramatically. Scott from Marshfield, Massachusetts his whole life. He just turned 24 in September. He drops nine, seven pin for a spare, three pieces to the right. Linehan, a 5-1 split. Frustrating shot. Frustrating leave, I should say. Mm. Welcome to Canada from Bowling, folks. Like golf, it'll drive you mad sometimes. Sometimes? Douglas yeah. Spare. That was a smart wood choice. Second Spare in the last three. 47 the ball through four for the young gun, Scott Douglas. The doctor. Yeah, I call him the doctor because he had a big, big injury. He came back <laughs> early. And he threw a, a Millis threw like a 143 and a 139. In a Friday Night Pro League match. So I said he's all healed, so I call him a doctor. So it's like physician healed thyself, yeah. I suppose. That's yeah. an Aesop's fable no one knows about. But yeah. uh. The quack doctor and all that. Um, <laughs> Linian 10, 38 yeah. through 4, three yep. tens in a row. That right. was a smart shot selection by Scott Douglas on that one. That left pe most piece of wood was mostly vertical. And it was more dubious whether it would take the seven. It could have, but the middle one was a better angle. So got to read the entire shot and make sure you uh, make the shot. Douglas on the extra session. Half was to right. Got to love that shot. A momentum killer. Two. 49 through four. In the third of five. Linehan drops nine. A slam dunk chance here with a seven pin with a plank in front. We've seen a number of these punch outs go, though. As spares. It's about a one in five on average, give or take, by the average professional bowler, class A bowler. Yeah. Statistics by Canon Football Network. The yeah. executive producer, Bob Lee. Small sample size, but it seems like a higher percentage today so far. The flat gutters here give you sometimes more action. This is something. Good bit on the object, won't carry. Six right, four, seven left. Linehan, spare. He's on the board. Nine, eight, and four, three tens. Now a spare. 48 half plus one. Douglas, nice out. Ten, pretty shot. Very good. 59 half. Just trampolined off the wood nicely. Scott's high single 170, high triple 400, high five 625. Bowling since was a year and a half. And he says favorite bowling moment. This is nice that when he joined his brother Tim as a pro bowler, that was his favorite bowling moment. Quarter west, the yikes for Gwendolyn GA. Who had a 55 half? Who said you can't drive 55? Sammy Hagar says he can't drive 55. Uh, 55 watts per watt, though. That's, the, great that's video. the question. Well, how about 55 kilometers, right? Yeah, that, uh, I couldn't do that I, for I'm, different I'm reasons. Learning, I'm learning my kilometers on the way up from Massachusetts. 
Yeah. So 70, mi 70 miles an hour is 110 kilometers, right? 68, I think yeah, yeah, something like that. Right. You were driving a good I'm a lost cause of that stuff. Well, that's why Dan's got the cruise control in his vehicle. You're, we're good. I got the worst mark in my class in the metric test. <laughs> Overthought it. What else is new? Uh, our, our, none of our country made the grade, I think you'll find. <laughs> that's an eight for Dugay. He's got the five pin as well and a nine for Brown. So back to the top of the order. Middle part of the match, past the halfway point of the match now. Playoffs to follow next on Can Open Bowling Network, separate broadcast. Run of Duguay, three in the five. Browns sweep six. One, two, nine, ten. Maggie says 2.7 twister bowling balls. It does not tie you up in a knot either, like the game of twister. Big bid, won't go. As long as it's angled, the pin's up in the end. Wendell takes up the king, the five, for a 10. 73 to seven. Nine from Brown. Mike Brown, 79, 79. through seven. That's right. Someone asked, we're here at Fair Lanes in Moncton, New Brunswick. 20 of the 36 lanes in action. Fantas All 24 the rest of the week. We've only known them a few hours, and they've already been fantastic hosts to us for certain, let alone all these bowlers. We're back here in the DJ booth where they're bumping the glow bowling. A lot of championships bowled in this house. We had a six-time world champion from McLaughlin Trucking Bowler bowled here earlier today. And it's the Queen Borg again. Bob Dix to call it. The Star Trek character, I call it. Seven of nine. Trying to sweep it over. Good try. Won't go. Sounds like a strange character name to me, but I'll have to ask my wife. She's a Trekkie. I'm not. I saw a couple episodes. Then how do you know that character of all characters? I, sh I saw a couple episodes. So what's seven of nine? Ah. And then she plays in Picard also. <laughs> so both with matching tens. 89, 83. Brown, 89. Duguay, 83. Lenihan's got to go up to retrieve something. Oh, the ball in the channel. All right, could you just play that play here? Uh, wrap it up the strings, right? Yeah, we'll do. Your levels were down anyway. Okay. Now your mic's up again, but I'll do, take right. the play by play from here if you. Sure. Since since you asked off the mic. Oops. Oh, I'll take that off then. I gotta, I gotta save my voice. I got a hundred dollar bet with Bob Lee. I'm gonna save yeah. my voice for the finals. So wait, I took your le wait, I took your levels off, Paul. First you want to talk, then you don't, then you do, then you ah. Brown, big hit, 7, 9-10, uh, I beg your pardon. This one's going to be an interesting puzzle for him. gwendolyn has got to throw a ball straight down the middle in order to get this. This is not the leave you want to see, even though it's easier when you punch it by accident. Gwendolyn Duguay, 171 single, 427 triple, and a 651 high five for the owner of Avon Valley Lanes. Brown spares. Duguay comes to us from Wolfville, Nova Scotia. It's a brown of spare and a chance to get into the 110s. a little wide. We saw him at the Easter Classic as well. He had a good showing there. 178-10. Brown splat on the head pin. That's an accurate one. Too much of a good thing. 4, 6, 9, 10. Gives him a 6 fill and a 105 and 9. All scores unofficial just as well. That's right out of Duguay's hand. He got stuck in his hand a little bit. Temperatures are about uh, 8 degrees Celsius last I checked. About 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So 
But I guess I guess if you crowd a room full of bowlers, it's going to start to get humid in a hurry, I suppose. That's 10 for Brown. He gets a 115 string. Nine for Duguay, 102. Cut for this is the top 32 is probably going to be somewhere in the 120s we're speculating right now. So that will, uh, they'll probably be more comfortable if they're above that bar, but they can afford a little bit of that. Brian Purdy steps out of lane 14. Had a 120 average, current average 114. High single 202, high triple 50, 500 on the dot, and a high five of 715. Got a big 20 bowling center in Scarborough, Maine. Favorite bowling moment, bowling a 202. <laughs> it's pretty nice when you go over 200, eh? Daly's on a spare, 67 and a ball of the half. That ball's never out of it until it's over, and especially here with the uh, Moncton sidewalls, 3, 6, 7, 10. Daly won multiple Pro Series events. Three, six, seven, ten. Wood spins in and then dies off the back of the pin plate, and Daly goes Marquis on this one. Birdie, one, three, seven, stays put for a seven, 59. Just a second. I apologize, I must have made a loud mechanical noise there. I apologize for that. Trying to keep the cadence even there and that's not gonna help matters. Great to see you all there. We got more people than Calvin had pins with that 206. So we got at least north of that, so. Fantastic to see you all. Remember, this is Candlepin Bowling Network. If you wanna get your friends involved, it's a great, great way to stay in touch with all the great Candlepin matches wherever they may be, but especially here on the international stage. Candlepin Bowling Network, that's on Facebook and YouTube. We're streaming in both places today. Uh, sometimes it's one or the other, but for today, of course, we're going to use both platforms. And we're thrilled to have you along today. All week long, there's always going to be bowling from 9 to 6 Atlantic every single day. Daily spares. Purdy came close on his. Brian pins out well, that's 10. He'll need a couple more spares, but he's in shouting distance of a 120. Daly's breaking into the 130s if he can fill this well. That's not a given just yet. This is Greg Guyar. I've been joined alongside Dan Castle and uh, Paul Grant throughout the day. Bob Lee also lending a lot of support. He's gutted he couldn't be here today, unavoidable circumstances, but also providing help, invaluable help on social media as well. Our executive producer here at Candleton Bowling Network. Birdie's got the side saddle triangle, three, six, nine. Daly went straight through the middle. He got a spread eagle fill. Third ball's coming up for each. Still a lot of sticks to get. Still a lot to play for. Man for Big 20 got the 10. He's got 79. And Daly's a little confused. Now he's looking. First, first he was looking at his feet, and now he's looking at his hand. Still a good string working, 102 through 8, but certainly disappointed with that outcome. Some lead the question, are they throwing too fast? Are they sacrificing accuracy by throwing too fast? Believe me, Josh is taking a concerted effort to improve his accuracy overall. And that's shown in his recent results. Still, accuracy isn't everything in this game. That's a three and two punch out. Purdy mixes out five. Chance to escape with at least nine. He might be tempted to try for 10 on the head pin now that this wood is creeping up, although I don't think it's quite there. Daly turned the wood at six, seven. Seven for Brian Purdy, 86 through nine. Daly gets eight, 110. Mm -hmm. 
Dan, I'll turn your levels up right here if you want to pipe in. Birdie's on the head pin. Hopefully that you can hear me on that, right? I can hear you great. Excellent. Nice to see you, Dan. Hello, uh, Greg. Four, five, and seven. I'm back. Right, right on cue, uh, Purdy gets a castle leave, although the wood's in a different spot this time. Daily, boom, 6-10. How, how coincidental is that? As castle comes on the mic, the castle comes on to the lanes. <laughs> oh, that wood spun. Did he pick it, it up? It was, no, it did not. The wood was rolling behind. I'm trying to get on my stool here. It's, nah, it's the bad kind of excited voice, I'm afraid. Daly stomping his foot. That's a, It wasn't a big miss. He only missed it by a couple boards, I'd say. All right. Getting settled in here, and then I'll join you. Sounds Pretty good. Late in the game. Yep, this will be the – we're in the middle pair of bowlers here in the third string, so we're basically about the halfway point throughout. That's it. Tens apiece. Daly 120, Purdy 96. Daly's not happy with that game. Daly owns the triple record in my home lanes of Millis, Massachusetts. He just uh, recently set that. Holder of the singles record I just spoke to a moment ago, Peter Crawford, set a 227 new record. So Scotty Douglas on lane 14, Rob Linehan on lane 13, both gentlemen I know, and Rob Linehan and I are teammates actually. So uh, I know Rob well. Scotty goes through, misses a five pin. Linehan was on a fill, he picked up a seven mm -hmm. fill. So he closed out with 55. I tr uh, tried to kick the uh, four over to pick up the six. Not, not going to happen. And Scotty closes with a ten box, a nine box for a 68 at six. Linehan trying for a ten, gets the ten, 65 at, at the sixth box. Yeah, we keep harping on the differences of terminology, but yeah, you close out the box if it's you pull three balls, and it's open if it's the uh, mark still working. It, it does, it, you know, it's, it's, there's so much habit because, you know, to an American bowler, open box means there's, that uh, it was not a spare or a strike. So, Scott Douglas on first ball on box seven. Punches out, no he doesn't, he, you know, like Jinx Rob there, Rob punched out a, a half worcester right. Timmy took four in his first ball and has the- Scotty. Scotty. Uh -huh. Timmy's his brother. Tim Douglas and Scott Douglas are both top Ooh, bowlers. yes. Scotty just put up a uh, nice spare. So. Well, I tell you, these punch outs are never over until they're over, but Linehan's got, didn't get all the pin action on that one. So, a great spare by Scotty. As I mentioned, his brother Tim Douglas is also here. And both are top bowlers. I cover a lot of their matches myself. And um, great guys, both of them. All right, Rob ends up in the nine box for 74 after seven. So he's above par, as Bob likes to say, mm -hmm. which means you're over 10 per box, but he's got a ways to go to get to where he wants to be. They have said it on Canadian programs as well. I've uh, seen a few out of Nova Scotia. So Bob stole it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's listening, too. I know he is. He's getting with the times. He's got it. No, he may, he may well come up with that independently. Who knows? No American show used that term ever, but I think it's a perfectly good one. You know, a par assumes 10 a box. That's simple oh, as that. Oh, wow. Uh, Scotty got robbed on that one. Mm -hmm. He, he had, was all over the four horsemen. Wow. He put six in his fill for 84 after seven. Um, but he's going to have an open box <laughs> in the eight. I don't know how else to call it. Do whatever. And a 10 box. Rob looking for a 10 box, too. He gets his 10 box. It puts Rob at 84 after eight. Tim Douglas at 94 after eight. If you want to track current uh, scores right now, we're trying to circulate this leaguesecretary.com link, uh, a specific one that comes to the standings for this. That's where all the scores are being uploaded. Um, if you go to leaguesecretary.com itself, you can find Fairlanes Moncton, Fairlanes Moncton, where we are right now, to try and find the scores that way. 
Right, uh, both bowlers were in the pocket that time. Uh, Scott gets a nine drop in the eight pin, do uh, four pin doesn't go. And uh, Rob uh, Linehan drops eight. He's left with a 6-10. And a spare for Scott Douglas. That's what he wants to do. Can't get the strike, get the spare. Can't get the spare, get the 10. Can't get the 10, go on to the next box. Linehan, uh, that was a little weird. Um, just off of that, made the wood dance around a little bit, but it's still there. Yeah. And a nine box for Rob Linehan. Yeah, he threw a fair ball, no score. So Rob, Rob's a fun bowler to, to bowl with and to cover. I cover a ton of his matches, which I really am pleased to do. Uh, Rob has a nickname in the States, which he, he he's proud of. He's called the Roadrunner. <laughs> and that's because nobody in Candlepin Bowling knows how many steps Rob Linehan actually takes. I'm pretty sure it's always five, but. It seems to be somewhere around five, but we've counted six, we've counted four, we've counted seven. So, however, we get to spread eagle matching Tim Douglas' spread eagle, which was a three fill. Scott Douglas. Scott Douglas. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I've done more Timmies than Scotties. <laughs> All right, and both of them have similar leaves on that. Not quite the same, but. Oh. Oh, and that was not actually a true spread eagle. Because that nine pin was hiding back there, so I think his fill might have been two. Hang on a second. Paul's playing straight, so that's, let's see here. Well, that's the end of the third string. All right, hang on a second. Hang on. I'm going to drop your levels, Dan. My mic's still hot as I explain to folks that we're on to string number four in just a moment. Everyone's rotating over. All right. If I'm smart, I'm going to take this window away, do a full screen, not block the bowlers this time like a genius. Uh, oh, your levels are down, Dan, if you want to speak. Okay, your level's up for now if you want to talk. All right, now you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. So we just got to figure out the next group of bowlers who that's going to be. Yep. And, um, All changing now. String four about to begin. Yeah. So I don't know if I have sheets on everybody here. I know Paul's been out soliciting sheets and rosters, and which is mm -hmm. good. It's important. I saw Dan Ansdale's sheet, but he's way down in the lower numbers. It's only mostly nonstop action, folks. <laughs> we'll be right with you. They keep it moving pretty good here. Yeah. I mean, the bowlers have to switch lanes and pick up their balls. No, it's good. It's good efficiency, honestly. Like, it's not going to finish in the a lot of time period, but right. no, we're gonna we're gonna get home at a reasonable hour at the, the hotel, I should say. All right. So on lane 14. That's Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Okay, got a sheet here. Good. On lane 13. Do not have a sheet for this bowler. So we need to find out who that is. Uh, yep. Stand by. Okay. Yeah, if you could grab that so we don't have to shuffle around each other. So it's a little tight fit up here in the booth, and uh, sometimes it's more efficient for Greg to just go down than me to try to get around him um, in the fall down off of the approach. So Mike Brown starts off with a six drop and picks up two more. And then lane 13, we see a, a 10 and an eight box for Mike Brown. Okay, we got that. So do we know who the bowlers are? This is a well-oiled machine here. Mike Brown drops eight, seven, 10 split. On lane 13, we have five in a, in a drop. I'm kind of using those. And a spare for Brown. Yeah, do we have, the, Paul, do we have the bowlers on, the bowlers on 13? Right, we're going 
Catch up here, just keep, keep the score so we don't lose the score here. Well, we got Danny up on 13, I know that much. All right, Danny Martin, yep, okay, Danny Martin from Edmonston. Then Blake, then Evan. And then uh, Blake Doucette. Okay, we're, we're, so we're, we're, we're mostly there. So Mike Brown, um, we missed a box of two here on this. Mm -hmm. No, I, I got you. Okay, good. I, don't, I just don't see my score sheet up here anymore. One second. Be, be right with you. Yep, no problem. Brownsville with seven, so 25 through two, and no mark. Oh, that's a tough one on that. Just, yep, okay. This is live TV, folks. We're doing everything on the fly. We're doing everything on the fly. So as bowlers switch out, we have to find, uh, make sure we've got the sheets and the order and everything. So Danny Martin on the left from Edmondson has 18 after two. And a pair of 10 boxes, I believe. Yes. All right, so 28 for Danny Martin. Mike Brown on the right from Halifax, Nova Scotia, as a 35. Mike Brown has a high single of 196. And uh, Danny Martin has a high single of 198. Both really top bowlers here. Brown drops eight. He's got the five and the seven. Martin. Takes out everything but that seven pin. And look at that, he's on the wood and oh, just didn't quite work. So open in the third, fourth box. Martin picks up the mark in the fourth box. So he'll be a 38 in the ball and uh, Mike Brown is trying to uh, close out with a 10 on this one. Got a ball in the pin deck so he'll be delayed a bit. Now he's going for it. He's not gonna hit the ball. It's immaterial. Not going to hit the pin either, but but uh, he wasn't. He was confident he wasn't going to nail that ball. It says shall, but should it? But is it must? I think it depends on do you how bad do you want to chip your balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one likes to roquet their own uh, bowling balls. Oh my goodness, he's all over the head pin there, and he gets a nasty split. Martin on the left is on a fill. And uh, got a little, little bit away from him there. He just took out the two on the left. It's like the four and a seven is all it went. Martin shooting at the four, seven, nine, or four, seven, six. Does not get the six. And uh, Danny Martin drops a bunch more, but he still has two left, so no spare this time. 10 box for Mike Brown, 54 for the half. Mm -hmm. And we have Wood out of the, the fair range or? The Deadwood line. Deadwood line, yep. So it's in front of the Deadwood line, there's a little line there in front of the pin deck that if a piece of uh, wood, a, a downed pin f rolls before that, it's not in play has to be removed. So a nine box for for Danny Martin, 49, Mike Brown at 54. Now we come up to Josh Daly on lane 14 and Blake Doucette on lane 13. Blake Doucette from Weymouth, Nova Scotia. We have a Weymouth in Massachusetts too. And uh, his high single's a 202. He's got a 118 average. Josh Daly has been a phenomenon in Massachusetts recently. He's from Danvers, Mass. Average is 125. Has a high single of 192. A high triple of 478. And there's a strike for Doucette to start the, to start the game. Daly's on a spread eagle, does not get it. So Doucette has a high triple of 462, a high five of 704. As I said, Daly trying to pick up three more. He does, it's 10 box for him. He has a high triple of 478, a high five of 732. Bowls in Central Park Lanes in East Boston, as well as Academy Lanes in Haverhill.
right, coming into box two. Josh Daly on lane 14. I had the pleasure, or I don't know if I call it a total pleasure, bowling against Josh Doucet, subbing in my one league a couple of weeks ago. Um, wasn't pretty, but I, I did beat him, one, beat him one string out of five. 104 to 101, he had a bad string, he still threw a 699. So, nine fill on the strike for Doucette. Daly looking for a 10, he gets a nine. Doucette picks up a nine as well. So matching nine boxes, 28 and 19. Lane 13, Jake Blake Doucette. And uh, Josh Daly on the right is 19 after two. Daly is explosive, so his seven, uh, his 478 triple was a new record for our house in Millis. And he is trying to catch up with his 736 that jo Justin Waters owns for the five, and he's come pretty close. So first ball, Daly drops six, has a diamond right. Goes wide, just picks up the back two. Doucette on his first ball. Ends up with the 2-4, 6-10 split. 2-2. Two two. We're on 13 and 14 on Candlepin Bowling Network. All right, Doucet trying to pick up some of that mess. Great, good bid, only gets two, and Daly picks up a 10. 29 after three for Daly. And a 10 box for Doucet for 38. After two. Yeah, Daly even held up the two fingers after he took out the wrong side of the diamond, the back half of it. He's he's a young man who's doing amazing things in bowling right now, and, and only 24 years old, and, uh, and not even he'll be 24 soon, and uh, already making a huge mark in the game. Expect a lot of things out of Josh Daly. He's very precise, he studies the game, he studies where he wants to put the ball. Dropped eight on that first ball, 6-10. And he tries to go around the wood, but it doesn't carry the 10. Doucette, on the other hand, had a big mess, and he's left with a high-low jack, 1-7-10. Daly finishes with a nine box. Doucette picks up the high-low jack. Nice and clean. 1-7-10 split. And you just saw an eight here, even if it's for a 10 box, it's still re very respectable. So 48 after four for Blake Doucette. 38 after four for Josh Daly, not characteristic. I predict what? a bomb here. Yeah, he's getting luckless. He could have done better with the diamond, but even there, it's a one and four shot. The spread eagle 10 was a good one. Well, he, well. he was going for it. Both bowlers on the head pin. Daly on the right left with the castle leave, four, five, seven. Didn't even get the piece of wood to tantalize you with. Yeah, that's usually what goes with that. Doucette has, it looks like three and two. I can't tell if there's something back there behind it. Okay. Um, that's maybe, good roll. Maybe. This is Canada, it could roll. Nope, does not. Doucette picks up the three on the left. So Daly with that 10 box has 48 after five and that's uncharacteristic of him. Doucette has a 58 half. Only left one pin on the deck. Daly's pinning like crazy. Had two nine boxes and three tens. But without the marks, he's in a little trouble on this string. All right, Rob Linehan on the right. On the left is Evan Riva. 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 It seems like there's a really high percentage of chances I'm going to mispronounce it the first time. I don't seem to guess right. Yeah. Um, we're, we're speed networking today. Got a lot of names to get to know. So um, Rob <laughs> Linehan in the Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour. I love um, it's a big name out of Maine. And uh, no, it's going to break the split. So Linehan's shooting in a row of three. His first ball, and he goes wide left. Riva, Riva, Riva. Mm -hmm. Riva drops seven. He's got a nasty split there, does not go. 
Looked like the 4 6 10. Lenahan trying to clean this up. And uh, he only gets, well, there was a five pin back there anyway, so he got two of them. So it's an eight box for Lenahan, a nine box for Ryder. Linehan is carrying an average of 115 right now in the Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour. High single in the tour is 159. High five, 572. His high five ever, 677. His high single, 173. High triple, 433. He lives in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Young man at 36. And he gets that to go. Hey, just a shout out to the folks. Are, is our sound in, in uh, sync or not? Just to let us know if the sound and uh, video is working for you. If not, I might have to reset something about my stream. I'm hoping it's a good quality viewing experience as ever. All right, Riva still has the 2-6-10 left to shoot at. Goes for the safety shot mm -hmm. and picks up a nine. So 18 after two, Linehan's at 18 after two also, but he has a spare to fill. Riva is from Maine, and uh, he's averaging about a 121, high single 193, triple 497, high five, 797, just missed the 800 mark. Linehan fills his spare with an eight. One seven is the remainder. Riva has a four horseman left plus the 10 pin. That's a makeable spare. Now Rob's being a lefty, this might be a tough shot for him. And uh, he, he's trying to cut the inside of the head pin, but a little too much cut. And uh, Riva got some luck there. Look at that. He's missed everything with the ball, but a piece of wood came back, hit the seven and moved forward, took out the four and a two also. Domino's tumbling. And Lenahan <laughs> closes with an eight box, as does Riva. Riva once put on a, a sheet for a TV show. He, he said, my wife's better at bowling than me. That, that would be Madison. Formerly Maddie Kelly. Had a wonderful wedding, and now this is Riva. Okay, Rob Linehan, he's all over the head pin that time. A little full, though. He's up to the 2 4 7 6, 10, and Riva is on a head pin clean and punches out the one five ten. Right hand trying to cut that misses his object. Riva just gets a seven pin. Both bowlers in a position where they really need to clean this up. And Linehan just gets a one. He had a good idea there, I think. Riva, I think, ends up with a seven. Yep, sure does. So it was forecasted probably that the cut is rising significantly. It might be now more in the 123, it's being speculated. For the average. Uh, for Bob Yeah, for average, of course. So rating is 615 through the five string qualifier. This is the fourth of five strings. Oh, Linehan got some great action on that and took out everything but the five and the nine. And a strike for Riva. It's a good way to close out the half. Linehan looking for a mark, and he's off again. Uh -huh. He was going for those pins, I promise you. Oh, I know he was. It's the old adage, play the pins if you see them. Just off a little to the left, that's all. And he gets the nine box, so Rob Linehan closes with a 50. Evan Riva with 49. So now coming up in our match here, our qualifying games. They're not really going head to head here. We're back on Mike Brown on the right on lane 14. And um, Brown drops eight. Danny Martin on the left took out. 
just four, but he picked up everything in the seven in the spare attempt. And uh, Mike Brown has his end box. And a ten box for Danny Martin as well. <laughs> I just messaged like, Evan said his wife's better at bowling. <laughs> I think it was fiance at the time that you wrote that, of course, now wife. And <laughs> she comes on saying that he's proven that now. <laughs> Oh, that's not nice. I love it, though. Bowlers tease each other all the time. Doesn't matter who. Oh, yeah. Um, Mike Brown, spread eagle, punched out the middle. Andy Martin got a good break on it. He's on a head pin solid, but I thought it was a little full, but he ends up with a decent leave. Brown trying to clean up the spread eagle. Yeah, again, when it bounces out of the channel like that, it's got a chance, although it ran out of steam. Something, something electric charging station. I don't know the talking points or whatever. Good All luck right. with. Good luck with this one. Meanwhile, Danny, if you get this, I'll eat my hat. I'll eat it. wood available. Yeah, that looks five and six. Yeah, tough to make. I made it recently, but man, that was lucky. Nine box for Brown brings him to 73, and a 10 for Martin brings him up to 69. Okay, so 69 to 73 at the seventh box of the string. All right, now I can see the comments. I haven't been looking. I've got I got them feeding here. I've been going a million miles an hour. I'm trying to get to yeah. I like to I like to respond I've, to some of them too. Yeah, I'm not doing it as much here. I'm trying to keep the focus on the bowlers in front of us. But yeah, exactly. At the same time, yeah, yeah. Of course, we're doing you're doing a good job as always. Yeah. We're doing good. We're doing yeah, good. just everybody out there, just be aware. We're we're, we, we're like two one arm paper hangers, so to speak. Yeah. So um, we are 100 percent reading. We greatly appreciate every single comment, even if we don't acknowledge every single one. All right, Martin, after second ball, is left with a 7 and the 8. And, or Brown, I'm sorry. And Martin has three pins left. Can't quite read what they are, a head pin. All right, so eight box for Martin, uh, eight box, uh, nine box for Martin, and eight box for Brown. Let me get back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, 78 and 81, respectively. 78 on lane 13, 81 on lane 14. Yeah, nothing below eight so far. No, the pinning is good. Just need to get some marks here. That's yeah. a good ball. Is he going to take it? Does not quite take that four pin. Yeah. And a good ball again from uh, Danny Martin. But he ends up with a cluster of five. And all over it. Good spare in the ninth for Mike Brown. That's good. Oh, and it's a spare for Danny Martin. I thought he hit it right. He deserved that spare. Yeah. Nothing cheap about that one. Not often you see the five tip into the eight, but yeah, it was a good shot. Started great, ended weird, ended great. All right, on the fills. Both bowlers on matching marks. Brown puts eight on his. He's got the one and a nine left. And Martin, he's getting some late action here. How many more are going to go? Just seven. So he closes the ninth box. Danny Martin with 95. Mike Brown closes with 99. And no mark there. The nine pin didn't carry. Martin is looking at the one, eight, ten. And nothing goes well. Huh. Never say never. So the head pin goes from Rolling Wood and uh, Danny. Mike Brown closes with a 10 box for a 109 string. Yep. Every pin, you never and know. And a 10 box there is a 105 string. So Martin with a 105, Brown with a 109. Remember, all scores are available on leaksecretary.com. We're trying to circulate the link online and everywhere, but uh, I don't see a frozen screen. Sorry to the one viewer out there who is, but. Uh, our display's looking fine here. Could be a bandwidth thing, but just taking a look. Nope. All not right. showing a network. Not showing network either. 
so this feed looks good. Yeah. So Blake Doucette from Weymouth, Nova Scotia, coming up on lane 13, and Josh Daly. Ooh. Who was open for all five boxes with 48 at the half, and Doucette with 58 at his half, and Doucette drops a bomb. Again. That was a hammer. Strike in the sixth, second one of the string. He's only left one pin standing. He just had a nine box. Everything else was either a strike or a ten. Daly trying to make the spare. And oh. there's a clutch shot from Daly. He, that's the kind of stuff we're used to seeing from him. It's young, just young man from Danvers, Massachusetts. Got the wood to kick across somehow. And uh, so marks for both of them. Uh, Doucette at 68 plus two balls. Daly at 58 plus a ball. Thanks for nothing. Wow. Three, four, Not five, six, seven, way. eight, ten. Yeah. Uh, what went on that? The one, the two, the four. That's it. Yeah, one, so, one two, nine. Uh, okay, yeah, the four's still up. One, two, nine. How do you do that? You can never do that intentionally. Three in a fill. Uh-oh. Six pin hit. Doucette, on the other hand, has eight in his first ball, and it's going to be a nine fill for his strike. So that puts him at 77. That's a six box. Daly trying to get out of this mess. Seven box. He's frustrated. I don't blame him. 68 at the seventh box. Remember, he carries an average of about 125. So this is significantly below his average so far, but there's three boxes to go. And Doucette puts up a 10 for an 87 uh, after seven boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, great to see Tavan Tapari from Finland. I have an old friend from Finland that was an exchange student when I was in high school. He's Ooh. a doctor now. And there's a strike from Doucette, his third of the string in the eighth box. Daly took out seven. He's got the one, three, six. And there's a spare for Josh Daly. So um, I don't talk to my friend much, but we are connected on Facebook. His name is Panu Kuapala, is, an, is a gentleman's name. In uh, Finland, I'm not sure what part. But uh, Newman High School, and we've been in touch a few times since. So great to see somebody watching Campbellton bowling, which I think is the best form of bowling that there is. And we're coming to you from Moncton, New Brunswick. Oh, yeah, I suppose. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose. All right, on the fill for Daly. <laughs> Splat. Uh, all over the head pin, but no love from the pins for that. That's a five drop. Doucette's on a strike. Oh, and how about oh, another one? Oh, 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 Why not? Oh, what a way to double that. That's four strikes in the string. No spares. More strikes than spares. Fire. And there's a amazing spare from Daly. Daly puts up a, a nice mark on that nasty split that he had. Three and twos are pretty when they go. And uh, so both bowlers on marks. They, they gave me page two twice. Doucette is looking for a triple here. Daly's looking to fill this mark as big as he can get and then get another. Doucette on the head pin and there's a strike for Daly. There's a strike for Daly. Doucette looking for a triple. Not gonna oh. happen, close. That was close, so that 20 box gives Josh Daly a 103 at nine. And my screen just went white again. I can't see what uh, happened. That's a spare, though, and I'll I'll get that fixed. Okay, so. Do set clobbered that spare, I promise you. Okay, I, I lost uh, my video feed at that point. Yeah, only yours, mercifully. Yeah, and so I, I was focused more on the video than on the action in front of me, which is a little harder to see. It's like the, it's like the modern day equivalent of Clippy coming up trying to interfere with it. It looks like you're trying to write a letter. Would you like some help? Yeah. So Doucette's at 135 and 9. Daly's at 103 and 9. Both are on marks. Yeah. Doucette on a spare.
Daly on a strike. So he, yeah, he's actually a 113 plus and two balls. And it made the image laggy for good measure. Sheesh. Oh, oh he tries for the double. Just about gets it nine foot so far. Doucette. Oh. Light, light hit on a head pin. Just takes out three. He thought 150 was labeled on that one. And a spare for Daly to finish. So Doucette. Jake Doucette. Blake. 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 Doucette. Closes 148, and Josh Daly with a 123. And now we see uh, Rob Linehan on the right, and Evan Riva on the left. Linehan from Massachusetts, Riva from Maine. Riva is on a strike, looking for two ball fill, so he's a 43 plus two balls. Left. And he goes, yeah, he goes left on a two pin. Gets three on his first ball. Linehan has a half Worcester. Just punches out the one five. And oh. Riva, beautiful pin comes from the back to knock out the head pin. Linehan with an eight box, puts him at 58. Riva is at 63 plus a ball. All right, Linehan, nice on his, on his left pocket. Drops everything but the 5.89. Oh, geez, on the Phil Riva has a misfortune of picking up what we call a half with stir. The three and the nine pin, just a punch out. Linehan looking for a mark here. Or the two and eight, of course, obviously. Yeah, uh, the other side. Or the full Worcester, which is the one five. So two and a fill, that puts him at 65 at six. And Linehan did not get his spare. And there's a 10 box for Rivas. So Rivas is 75. Linehan with a nine box puts him at 67 through seven boxes. Just one mark so far for Rob. We have a pin down there. Need a reset, re-racking on lane 14. Re Rive is going ahead. Took out seven. The mm. seven, nine, ten. Got a, got a friend for every pin. Pair off and partner up. And Linehan, we see that same hit that Daly had recently. He got a little bit better luck out of it, though. Okay, he made, huh. it, he made a shot at it. It's tough to figure out how that's going to work. It's reasonable, even though the pin action was dissatisfying. Nice 10 from Linehan. 77 after 8 for Rob. And a 9 box. Is it going to be a 10? It's going to be uh, a 10. Called it early. That, that's good shooting overall. The caps are so difficult to get right. You thought aiming at the full width of the pin was hard enough as it is. Okay, box nine, Rob Linehan on the right. Goes wide. Mm. Onto the six pin, just the 6'10". Evan Riva, he's wide but not as much on the three pin. Takes out four pins. Rob trying to need to throw a strike ball here to get this to go. He does. And the nine pin doesn't go. And a punch out for Riva. Both will have an open box. And then I so not rem what they want. So remember, team's action coming up. Well, first of all, singles knockout in just a few moments after this uh, shift concludes. We've got one more string after this. Nine apiece. And then teams action all through uh, Tuesday through Saturday. The playoffs will start late Friday into Saturday with uh, round robin qualifiers beforehand. All action starts at 9 a.m. Atlantic time, 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so that's 9 a.m. local time, which is Greenwich Mean Time minus four. Okay, Linehan punches out a half Worcester right. Riva and a spread eagle minus a pin. Goes for the three. Nothing carries over. 
So Linehan will be under 100 this game. That's not like him, but it happens to everybody. And a nine box for Rob Linehan for a 93 strength. An eight box for Evan Riva for a 103. Eight box, 102. 102. Or, or more if you let me fat finger it. But in any event, that's the correct score sheet we see here. Uh, so again, people are asking where the scores are. We don't have the full ones at this moment. We got a little unlucky with the technical, uh, just out factors completely outside of our control here, but we'll get that for you as soon as we can. In the meantime, LeagueSecretary.com. Uh, look up Fairlanes, Moncton, New Brunswick. That's where we are, this wonderful 36 lane facility. Strength five will begin in just a moment. Uh, we're finishing up on the other lanes, and then once you see everyone move right, we'll be ready to go. Uh, Dan, I can present to you the names of our uh, three upcoming bowlers, if you don't mind me I don't dropping mind more all. things in your lap. That's okay. Let's clear out the deck here. Yeah, we got And start here. Now, do we, uh, I know Jim Nestor. Mm -hmm. Okay, we only have a partial roster here. So we uh, well, that's just for the new ones. Oh, okay. Jeez. Thank you, that's logical. Yeah. So these are the lane 13 guys. Okay, I'm getting there. Hey, you know. We got it. We're rolling. I'm just starting to slip. I still have a few years left. Nonsense. I'm never going to rush anyone along. There's Life's too short to rush anyone more than that. That's just not nice. All right, so this set we can clear out. <laughs> Strength five to begin soon. Stretch a little bit here. Are we on a live mic? Yeah, oh yeah, the mic's hot, sorry. Let me drop your level. There we go. I can explain to everyone what's going on here, so. Looks like movement's starting to happen now, so I think we're about to make a move here. And then let me key in these names. Once again, that's Nestor. I saw, is it Merrill next? Uh, yes, it's Merrill in the middle and uh, Weber on the end. <coughs> no need to scoop your mic up, Dan. But, uh, Martin up on lane 14. This is Jim Nestor on lane 13 to start this final string of the second qualifying shift. Let's get your mic situated there. I'll raise your levels up. Okay, we're back. So on lane 13, we have Jim Nestor. Had several matches recently covered Ooh. with Jim Nestor. Great bowler. On the right, Danny Martin, right? That's right. Okay. And uh, so, introduce you to Jim Nestor. And I don't have a score scored up on my screen, so. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, Jim Nestor is from North Brookfield, Massachusetts, and averages 116. Career high season is 128. High single, a 199, 468 triple, 738, high five. So, uh, so covered him in a match uh, just uh, Saturday, actually. Uh, we did an Atlanta Candleton singles tour match, and he had his match, and then I had a match of my own. And uh, let's see how he's doing. I know his left shoulder was bothering him a lot. Danny Martin started with a, a nine box. Nestor started with a ten, and oh. he's got a nine box. And hit it pretty good. Second time Jim's gotten stymied by Wood. Oh, that was a mark. I'm sorry. This is fair for Martin. So, I, so if I start talking on something else, I might miss a ball. So forgive me, please. Easy, easy. Don't hurt my friend. Don't, don't 
So Nestor closes with a pair of tens for 20 after two. Yeah. Martin is at 19 and a ball. Oh, his ball takes a break to the right and Ooh. goes by the head pin and only picks out the three. Very unfortunate, but still a makeable spare. Only one in the fill. Nestor, he's in the pocket pretty good that time. Not head to head, but how interesting a development that would have been if it were. Yeah, that. Uh, now he was hoping that Wood would stay there. Martin picked up six more, so he has the one, uh, six, and nine left. Nestor has a triangle on the right, but that five pin, the Wood looked good for a little bit. It rolled out of play. I think he's going to use it. He did. It didn't, didn't help him much, but he's got two more. Martin trying to get a 10 here. And he gets a nice 10. So starting with that three pin only, ending up with a 10 box, can't say that's bad. Nestor with a 10 box as well. Three 10 boxes in <laughs> a row for Jim Nestor. Absolutely perfect so far. Nice. 30 and 30 for each bowler. All right, we're coming into box 14. Danny Martin on the right. From Edmondson, Nova Scotia. And he puts it on a three pin, takes out six, seven. Jim Nestor's over on the three pin, he takes out seven. Martin is shooting at the one, six, 10, and Nestor at the one, two, seven. Okay, Martin picks up just the back pins, and as the ball is going to go in front oh. of him, Nestor gets a mark. Finally, the wood does them a favor. I was worried it was. That ball's still rolling around the there. Has the potential to come and take out that pin. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It's just teasing him. No, it just, it never does. Has yeah. it ever? Uh, sound off below. Have you ever seen a spinning ball take it off? Take out a pin. Yeah, but they're very rarely. And they don't. Yeah. I've never seen one stay on the deck that long. And then he gets psychologically bamboozled by it, and he shoots it way away from the ball just to make darn sure he didn't roquet it. That's, that's a term of croquet. You hit a ball away. So that's a nine box for Martin, and Nestor's on a spare. It's not a ten. He was a spare. Did you catch it? Uh, apparently our mics caught mixed up a lot of. Ha. <laughs> um, Nestor's box, last box was a spare. It was. Excuse, uh, excuse me. I knew that. Gosh. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's been a long day. Just in time for him to fill it. Here we go. All right, so six on the first drop for Danny Martin. Nestor on the fill. Boom. And that's a pretty good fill, and that's a great fill. That's as good as you can do. A 10 box, 10 or 10 fill for Jim Nestor with that strike. And so he sits down on a strike. 60 plus two balls. Danny Martin looking to clean this mess up. He's got the four and the 10, and they stayed up. So an eight box. At the halfway point, the first two bowlers in this particular set of bowlers trying to qualify for the playoffs. Jim Nestor sits down with 60 and two balls. Danny Martin, 47. Now we have Blake Doucette on the right. I saw him bowl in the last match. And he's in the pocket and he drops nine. And on the left, who just dropped four pins on his first ball. Doucette's shooting at a single pin spare. Danny Martin at a 4.02, by the way, in the first three. And there's marks for both bowlers. Doucette with a single pin. And Chris Merrill from Lewiston, Maine. Um, with a big mess of pins. So Chris is from Lewiston, Maine. Obviously been in the news lately. He has a 125 average, just high single 195, high triple 492, high five 745. You put nine on the fill, two set drop strike for his. I wasn't going to interrupt that. doucette has got the strike in. Yep. Yeah, it's great to see Lewis and Van together. It's uh, just terrible what happened to them as Merrill picks up the spare. And I'm not going to harp on it every time we mention Lewis, but you know we've uh, yeah. acknowledged it on the air how terrible it was. It took place at um, the just-in-time recreation was attacked. 
and uh, you know they're going through it now. You know, so so Chris doesn't bowl out of that house. He bowls out of Stars and Strikes yes. bowling in Paris, Maine. Yeah. A little different ball. Yeah. All right, place. And he's got 19 after the first. Two sets at 20 after the first, and two balls. Are we looking at a double strike? And we sure a are. Double strike. Yeah. Our love and support with you, Lewis. That's point B. Yeah. It touches all of us, and especially in the bowling community. Yeah. Fantastic bowling by Blake. Blake is has a spare double strike. Merrill. Ooh. Just missed a spare on that. He put five in his spare, so he's a 34 after two. Yeah, nothing's over till it's over in this, in this house. And a 10 box for 44 after three for Chris Merrill to set. He's at 20, 30, 40, 50. <laughs> and he still has another couple balls to fill that last strike. Yeah, pins get taken out from behind all the time here. If you got a working ball, you can get it off the sidewall, get it working, and uh, spread eagles even aren't impossible. I wish Bob was here with his radar gun. We're going to see a backdoor strike. No, eight and a fill. And a clear he left for Merrill. Not going to come out. So, and Ooh. he does not get the spare. So an eight fill on a second strike. So Blake Doucette set a very comfortable 65 after three. And an open box gives him eight more, 73 after four. In the meantime, Chris Merrill did not make a spare, and he still has a nine and a seven there. Try to clean those up. Nicely done. Nice clean shot for a 54 after five, after four with that 10 box. First ball in box five. Blake Doucette drops nine. Chris Merrill, just three. I've got scores on my hand. We'll get to those in a sec. Yep, let's finish out the half. And then we'll jump into that. So, spare for Doucette. Merrill making a great bid on that half Worcester, sort of. And we've got another late pin going over there, just enough to tease you to think that it might take something out, but <laughs> it doesn't take anything out. Chance to go pin perfect. You can't hear me from here. I can say that. Oh, maybe he could. Whoops. Nine box. So Chris Merrill sits down with a 63. Sorry, Chris. Blake Doucette, 83 and a ball. So go ahead with those scores while our next bowlers come up. Well, just a mo not a moment too soon. Mark Weber is up here. He's got a 139 average uh, right now, working 5.57 five, through 5. Only one better from the second shift is, uh, uh, well, Calvin Locke, 141, including that 206 high game, 566 through the 4. So Mark Weber on our left. And uh, can't see where he's out of. I think he's out of Maine, but I'm not positive on that. And They uh, both are. Oh, we got a couple of Mainers here. Yep. In Massachusetts, we often call them maniacs, but they don't like that. We call them Mainers. No, no, no. That's okay. I have uh, someone special in Maine. So a spare and a first for Riva, a spare and a first for Weber. Actually, like Maine a lot. It's a beautiful state. People are cool. Oh yeah, we love it. A bit far, otherwise I'd go there more often. Not that far, Other just to get into Maine. That's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, Ryan Cox, 132 average. Jay Simmons, 131 average. Josh Daly, a 129 average. So remember, the high average on the first shift was Joey Lister. That was also 132. David Cooper at a 129 average. Um, what have we here? Doucette and uh, Mike Jakes, 128 apiece. Danny Martin, 126. Carl St. Orange, 125. Uh, we're looking for probably low 120s, maybe high 110s uh, to make it into the knockout round. So Riva put five on his fill for a 15 first box. He's I see four, I'm afraid. Four, is there a five pin back there? Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it. And uh, Promise you. We Weber took out seven, and man, he takes it off the wall for another mark. Nice. He looks disappointed, but hey, if it goes, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, maybe a little sheepish, I suppose, but you know, you take those breaks in this game. You, you never give them back, that's for sure. That's right. So, Riva closes with a nine box. He's at 23. And uh, Weber's at 27 plus a ball. OK, 
hit box three. Riva with a strike. Yeah. Another strike in, the, uh, in this match. We're getting a lot of strikes lately. And Weber puts six in his spare. He's got a tough one to make here. Three, six, four, seven. I like that wood kind of. He can hit that pin and then kick it over a little. That's what he's trying to do, but hmm. he just gets the wood. I'm not sure how he would have had it anyway. He had to, would have had to send it in front, perhaps. A little bit light on the left, I think, and then, then deflect the ball over to the wood. I think I think that might have worked. But these guys are better bowlers than I am, so good chance I'm wrong on that. But regardless, an eight box for Mark Weber, a strike for Evan Riva. Riva follows up his strike with mm. an eight drop. Doubles do happen here, absolutely they have. We've seen it. Yeah, we've seen a couple of them just in the last half hour. We saw a 206 string recently too. Riva just wide on that. Weber's gonna have to wait for that deadwood. Very standard delay while one person goes out to get that pin. No, uh, nothing on nothing doing for Evan Riva on that bid. But so excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Eight in the fill, mm -hmm. eight in the box. So 41 after three for Evan Riva and 49 after four. Yep, that's right. Waiting on that wood there, and it looks like we is it in motion? I'm trying to see what the delay is. It was, but it looks like it's settled down. So Chris Merrill will go down and remove the pin. Bowler can't do it for themselves. That's a, that's a follow. Under new circumstances, the rule says that uh, the bowler deign not pass the territory. And there it is. There's a mark. Well worth the wait for uh, my Mark Weber. Right. And in box five, Evan Riva drops nine. He's got the seven pin. The wood might help. It'd be better if it's touching if it's angled out a little. That's a dodgy angle. It is. It could go either way. And this time it goes for a spare. Right, uh, Weber put eight on his spare. 110. 59 after four. And he catches it for a nice mark. Carries the ball over to the 10 pin. And he's at 69 and a ball at the halfway point. Evan Riva is at 59 and a ball. <coughs> now we're back to the top of our rotation here. Whoop. And on the right, we have Danny Martin. On the left, Jim Nestor. Jim Nestor won. The Outrun the Bear tournament in Millis, Massachusetts recently. This is a large tournament that we hold there in several variations. It's become one of the biggest tournaments in Candlepin. And he was a winner. We started with 88 bowlers and through a series of eliminations, he ended up standing alone. That's an accomplishment. Danny Martin's been running a 126 average uh, to this point. That's through uh, four strings now. He had a 400 triple. Seems to be backsliding a little bit, but. Now, if he can mark, uh, get a couple three marks here, he's going to be back on pace. Yeah. He's a, he, oh, he's a good shape. He's a good shape. So Nestor's on a strike that he left in a fifth box. And what's he got in the sixth box? Oh, he's trying. Came close. Took out five in his first ball. Look at this. Oh, Riva, a little full on a head pin. Does not get hmm? clearly to fall. Danny Martin. Yep. Nestor's got his strike fill of eight. That's 18. 68 through six. And Nicely played. Ten, ten box for Nestor. Beautifully done. Seventy-eight after six for Nestor. That was a. Yeah, that was a seven box. Yep. 
I was waiting for the handwriting. Yeah, uh, Martin drops six. He's got a check mark. Oh, that's ugly. Nestor's on the head pin, but he's left with a three on the left, a five pin, a six in the ten. Martin's on it. There was a sleeper back there that didn't go. All the ones around did. Nestor's got a big tough one to shoot at. He's on Ooh. it. Ooh, goodness. That was the only place it could go, and nothing to be ashamed of for that. It's frustrating that that additional six pin did not go. So he ought to get it here with that wood. No problem at all. Ten box for Jim Nestor. Ten box for Danny Martin. 88 for Nestor, 64 for Martin at the seventh box. Danny Martin coming in at box eight. He's on the head pin a little bit firm. Gets a seven pin split. Two, four, six. Nestor's off the head pin onto the three pin. And he only drops five. Trying to cut that over to take out the six, but he misses his object a little bit. Nestor made a great bid on that mess before. Let's see if he can do it twice and this time get it. Nope, the nine and 10 decided to stick around. And the wood got backsplashed, so he'll have to wait on that as well. So in just a moment, the uh, playoffs are going to begin. Singles elimination knockout. Simple as that. One stringers do or do not. So Nestor needs to close out the eighth box. He's shooting at the nine and the 10. He probably just wants to get one of those. And he gets a field goal, but a field goal doesn't count in bowling. So it's an eight box. Yeah, and we're not scoring, we're not scoring rouges either. <laughs> ninth box, Danny Martin on the right. Solid on the head pin and 90% of a strike but not 100%. Still a pretty good leave. Four pin with a big piece of wood in front of it. You never know what's gonna happen with the wood for sure, but that to me, that looks like it'll go. Nestor's on the head pin solid. Four, seven, six. And I think that's gonna go, and it does. So there's a spare in the ninth for Danny Martin. Nestor's got a little bit, he's got some wood to work with, so he's got a shot. And Whoa. wow. Right in front of the seven pin, it dropped off the wall, and you know, and, and with the perspective you have in bowling, where you know you don't realize the pins are one foot apart. That pin actually may have been further out than it looked, but it sure looked like it was about to brush the seven pin. Sometimes it just spins out at just the wrong moment. Tough one. Well, that's true. So Nestor's at at the ninth box. He's at 105. Martin's at 84 plus a mark. I think probably to stay in contention, he's going to need some strikes here. What an incredible facility. I'm knocking on wood, I promise you, but this, I haven't seen a single lane breakdown so far. These guys maintain it super well. We've seen some slow resets, but nothing beyond that. Sure. Fair lanes, Moncton, New Brunswick. All right, so just five on the fill. Nestor drops nine. Uh, it's that it's that Chester Cove leave again. The he's here in the world. I can say that. He, he keeps doing. It. Yeah, he's here. I saw him. I talked to Dave a little bit ago. That's the leave he always loves on New England Candlepins, that YouTube TV show. They got some episodes in the can. It's coming back after. Yeah, they just uh, did a taping and, and uh, a lot of competition in that. The cutoffs yeah. were really high this year. Yeah. So I mean, in the, just to qualify to get on the, the show was. What, 620 or better? Something like that, 630? Yeah. Combination of, uh, I mean, Ryan's Millis house effect is definitely going up. You know, the pins are sliding, but uh, bowling ability is going up as well. A lot of, a lot of top bowlers have been bowling there recently. So a few years ago when, when uh, they were doing that show, um, New England Candle Pins, it was a three-string run-up roll-off, and usually the cutoff would be around 355 to 360 for three. So not anymore. So Nestor ends oh, he's up with spared. He's, he, oh, he's spared. Box. He's spared. Yeah, I see that. There's the mark. Yeah, I see yeah, it. He's going back up. Okay. Lane delays will do that. 
And uh, that time he kind of hooked his ball to the right a little bit, so only gets four. Don't press fill. too soon. No, that's not going to tip. No, that's not going to do it. Actually, it's four. In fact, yeah, I've got the five that's and the eight back I there. Oh. I said I was right that time. <laughs> ah. It happens from time to time. So Nestor has a 119 for this string. I would say my biggest weakness is listening skills. Well, I don't know. Being able to tune no. out is a good thing sometimes. No, no, sorry, I, I badly riffed on that old joke. It's just oh. like, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? I would say my biggest weakness is my listening skills. <laughs> oh, boy. We're getting a little stir crazy here, gang. And it's only don't, the beginning of the week. Don't worry, there's only 275 of them out there. We're fine. Yeah. That's all right. It's a bigger audience than I had for my radio show, I think. Back in the 80s. All right, yeah. Blake Doucette, he's on a mark. He threw an 83 half plus this ball, and that ball's seven, so that gives him a 90 half. Ooh. Chris Merrill threatens a strike here and uh, puts nine in the first ball. And Doucette, is he going to get this? Not going to go. So, but he has a great start to a big game. And Chris Martin with a spare. Chris Martin, I'm sorry, Chris Merrill. I, I yeah. happen to know Chris Martin, so. No worries. Hey, we're not that bad. You, we, we make our fumbles, you know? Yeah. You see it, you know it. It just, I totally get it. It's okay. I have to go through the list with my kids, too, to get the names. All right, do set. <laughs> oh, baby. Nice ball. Ma Merrill. He's going to get another in there. It looks like a six fill, maybe a five fill. No, so you were right the first time again. Six fill. All right, there we go. Doucette picks up the spare in the seventh with that triangle going down, and Merrill is shooting at the four horsemen left. Big string cooking. He does. He's a 110 and a ball after seven boxes. Ooh. Oh, come on. No, these horsemen just aren't all going. We've seen three oh, or four so many times. Cross is going to fall. It fell into the pit. Just, just it's tease to you. And uh, even that. Nine box for Chris Merrill, 88 after eight. Doucette's at 110 plus this ball. Merrill doing a little shopkeeping here, cleaning up those pins that were brought back, bringing them down. Actually didn't clean them up. They left them dirty. Yeah. So Clean up the standing pin, but that doesn't count for anything. Heavens no. Okay, so coming into box eight, Doucette's on a fill. He's a 110 plus mm. this ball, and that ball's an eight, so one, it's a nine. Okay, so a nine fill for Doucette. Merrill dropped eight. He's got a 7-10 split, but I kind of like that wood. I think it may go. I don't know, but it's, it's a possibility. Doucette, after that nine fill, Swings to the right and doesn't get it. And there we go. What did I do? I called that when I said he was going to get that. He got it. It's a spare in the eighth for Chris Merrill. And uh, Doucette misses that pin twice. So good time to set the reset and get rid of yeah. that one. So he's at a 128 after eight boxes. Nine is fine. And that's pretty good. A nine box is good. He would have liked to have that spare, but what we like and what we get isn't always the same thing. Set coming up to box nine and drops nine. Is it going to be ten? It's going to be ten. Here's a strike in the ninth box. And uh, Chris Merrill punches out spread eagle plus, I think, the eight pin. Am I seeing that right? Nope, no eight pin back there. Picks off just the three. Not happy with that. I don't blame him. Happens to everybody, but it's not a good time. And oh boy. Through the middle, five box. Definitely not helping his cause. 107 after nine. Doucette's at 138 plus a two ball fill. Harsh one. The, ugly, the best of head pins result in the ugliest of boxes. A tough one. And look at this. He's got a good solid head pin hit here. Nine in the first ball. Merrill's came back great with a nice nine drop. And four pin left. We just saw Daly on the right make a nice spare. And there's a spare on strike for 
Doucette and a spare for Chris Merrill. So Doucette is at 148 at the ninth box, 158 plus a fill. Very good strike. Possible 168 with another strike. Merrill's at 117 plus a ball. If I recall correctly, Blake had a heartbreaker five fill last time. Oh, that's a seven fill for Doucette and a four fill for Merrill. So excellent game from uh, Doucette, here from Blake Doucette with a 165. It's the highest string we've seen in a little bit. A 121 for Chris Merrill, nothing to sneeze at. So some excellent bowling here in this round. Yep, 120s is a good pace for the making the cut. Now back to Mark Weber and Evan Riva. Evan Riva both on spares. Riva, that's not something that would make me happy. He put it in the pocket and he dropped five. Four, five, seven, eight, nine. 64 is how he closes off the half. Weber's at 69 plus a spall. Does that Wood want to throw him a bone? He's going ahead and just punches out one. So Weber's taking his time. Evans thrown two balls. And here comes Weber with a six fill. And a good nine from Evan Riva for that box. So a six fill for Mark Weber. Right. And uh, he's on a spare now, and he just punches one. So that fill gives Mark Weber a 75 half. And he's got a split here to play with. He just picks up the front pin. So an eight box, and he's at 83. Six boxes in. Weber at 83, Riva at 73. We'll get a munch on some of this pizza from Keckler's Bar in just a moment. They're yeah, oh. we'll be coming up to a break soon. So Yeah, that'll be right before the knockouts, I'm assuming. They'll be warm-ups. Yep. So first ball for Riva is a clear right. Just another thing to be impressed by here in Moncton. Weber dropped six on his first ball. He's got the one, two, seven, five. And they're gone. Spare in the set eight for Riva, or for, for Weber, and a 10 for Riva. It's Riva at 83. Weber at 93 plus a ball. Uh, somehow I'm seeing uh, my mistake. I see Weber at 81 somehow. I'm taking a look up here. Mm. Yep, the score is correct now, so we'll just. There's no way that was a six, but I'm going to have to mark it that way just to catch up with the official scoring. Okay, so seven. See if for I can Riva get the to start. Seven in the fill for Weber. And I like Weber's setup there. He's got the one, two, ten. He's got wood in front of the one and two. And there's a spare for Evan Riva. Let's see if Weber can get this to carry over to the ten pin. Ah, here's the math. And he does. Nicely done. Played a little bit on the inside there. Spare for Weber. 108 plus a ball. Spare for Riva, 93 plus a ball. Coming in the ninth box, both bowlers on marks. Riva's first ball. He's on the two, takes out eight. So the one and three left. Weber, he's got an eight fill as well, so a pair of eights. And that puts Mark Weber at 116 and Evan Riva at 101. Riva's got another mark. Yeah, both bowlers running the pace they want to run now. This is great. Look at all this ink on the score sheet. There we go. Another mark for Weber. So that's Weber's seventh mark in his string. He's only had two boxes without a spare. And Riva's got four spares and a strike. So he's only had three boxes without a spare. Yeah. These guys are cooking. Calvin Locke dropped the 206 earlier, but depending on what he does here, Mark Weber could have a chance to pass him. He's working another great string. All right, that's a seven fill for Riva. I don't know if he can get diamond, the 206. Diamond, diamond. It's a diamond? Mm -hmm. Somehow that last pin isn't showing up very well. And an eight fill, without a doubt, for Weber. Oh, yeah, that's uh, you're not going to see it on that feed. Yeah, the, the 
Sometimes when there's a back pin here, from the way I'm looking at it, it's, it's hard to see. Weber, another mark, four in a row. Follow the bouncing ball. I have a bouncing ball, too. Mine does that same. I, I've been trying to get rid of it, and it doesn't work. So nine in the tenth for Evan Riva that puts him at 126. Yeah. Skip. And right now, Weber's at 144 plus this next ball. Skip one off that bouncing material of the foul line. Sometimes it jams up the ball spin, but not in this case. Uh, just a second. Am I a, a whole box off? Are you serious? Uh, I don't know. The Rivas, I thought, was done, but he kept going. No, I'm somehow a whole box and, off. Uh, wow. Weber put two on that spare that he just had. Okay, so that's correct. 146. Yep, that seems to be correct. Where did you pick up an extra box here? I don't I don't know. I'd say run down and take a picture of the scoreboard real quick. Uh huh. can you see it? In any of in any event the score ends up being kind of correct in a way. It's uh 125 for Riva, so all right, we'll call it 125. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I well, I've been doing so well too. Well <laughs> I didn't catch it either, so I'm and I'm following ball yeah. by ball. Not a, not so I'm not sure what happened here, but regardless, it's 125 for Evan Riva, 146 for Mark Weber. Yeah. As we said, we're, we, we do the score sheets like this pretty much for the viewers, but they're not official. Yep. They're not the official score sheets scores. Unofficial. Those are reported on sheets by each of the bowlers right. when they come up. Okay for me to take the stream off here? Or I we'll think take we're good to go, so we'll be Take a big old everybody. break and then save our energy for the big playoffs coming up. Yep, so we're going to come up and, and uh, with the 32 qualifiers are going to come up in the knockout round. Uh, Paul Grant will cover the first one, and we'll alternate.